final days before the All-Star break are staring the Phillies right in the eyes. Success against the upper echelon teams have put them in position to finish the first half with a very strong surge. A struggling White Sox team will have the last word before things are done. It's been six years since the Phillies faced the Chicago White Sox, and well, the fans had to wait a few more hours to get game one underway, but now two, a day-night doubleheader here at Citizens Bank Park. Game one is just a few moments away, and since the last time these two teams faced each other, there are still some players on both rosters, a couple on the DL for the White Sox, like Paul Canerco, and the former Phil Gavin Floyd and Ryan Howard for the Phillies, but Jimmy Rollins is in today's starting lineup, and John Danks will be the starting pitcher for the White Sox. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, lower Chris Wheeler. You know, the uh, last year at this point, the White Sox were probably the surprise team in the American League Central. Well, now in Robin Ventura's second year as the manager, things are a little different. Well, one of the reasons is that DL you just talked about, Tom. They, they had a lot of players that played for the full season for them last year, had really good years. This year, not so. They have a lot of problems on their ball club. Look at the difference in their one-loss record. That is really huge. And the road record, they are just terrible on the road right now. They're in last place in their division. Their batting average, their run scored are down. Their team ERA really not all that different. But when you think about playing these American League teams, even when they come to your park, you always think offense. And this big guy is still around. This is an unusual home run for him because it goes out real fast. Normally, he hits these kind. Moonshots. Adam Dunn is a guy who has played against the Phillies a lot over the years in the National League. He's having a tremendous season right now for the Chicago White Sox. Every time he swings a bat, he's a threat to hit the ball in the ballpark. Yeah, tremendous season home run-wise. Not so much batting average-wise, but they'll take the power production from a guy like Adam Dunn. And it's Jonathan Pettibone who will have to deal with Adam Dunn and the rest of the Sox in Game 1. Pettibone did a really good job. It was oppressive here on Sunday afternoon when he went out there. And you just hoped he could pitch four or five, maybe even six innings. Well, he did pitch into the sixth inning against the Atlanta Braves. The bullpen took over and did a very good job, and the Phillies would win that series. Pettibone continues to improve. His fastball velocity's up a little bit, has an outstanding changeup. He's not afraid to throw it to right-handed hitters. His breaking ball pretty good, too. But that changeup that he can throw to right-handed and left handed hitters off an improving fastball and fastball command that he has I think is what really makes him successful. All right so Jonathan Pettibone will be out there for a third consecutive day game. We'll see if he can make it through the sixth and possibly into the seventh in game one of this day night doubleheader. John Danks who had some shoulder problems missed almost a year where he'll be making his 10th start of the season for the Chicago White Sox. And the White Sox are coming up a very productive and somewhat heated series against the Detroit Tigers. They feel like that has brought them closer. We'll see if the Phillies can push them away with lineups at first pitch when we get back. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Five Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless.
Sox. The Phillies have taken the field behind right hander Jonathan Pettibone. And he's getting set to face the White Sox for the first time. Let's take a look at the Sox lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off in center field, Alejandro De Aza. Alexei Ramirez, the shortstop at second. Alex Rios hits third, followed by Adam Dunn. And then Dion DiCiedo, the left fielder. Connor Gillespie, the third baseman, will bat sixth. Hitting seventh is Josh Fegley, the catcher. Gordon Beckham, the second baseman, hits eighth. John Danks, ninth. And they'll face 22 year old right hander Jonathan Pettibone, making his 16th start of the year, 5 and 3, with an ERA of 3.84. Yeah, the you know, Phillies have been playing very, very well for the most part when this guy pitches, too, whether he wins or loses. The thing about Jonathan is he does keep them in ball games. And last time out, I thought he was tremendous in that heat on Sunday afternoon. Still struggling a little bit with left handed hitters, trying to get better with that. Okay, you saw the left-handed batters are hitting 311 against him. Here's one. It's Deaza, and he takes off the outside corner. Here's our scouting report on Jonathan. He uses changeup a lot. He'll throw fastball changeup. Then he also has slider cutter and very good in his last two starts, including that one we just mentioned against the Braves on Sunday. Last two starts, Pettibone went five and two thirds and five and a third. His record 2 0 during those two starts is earned an average 1.64. Facing a hot hitter in Alejandro De Aza. Phillies last saw with the Miami Marlins. And it's quickly three balls and no strikes to him. Pettibone, normally very good fastball command, has come out here and missed away with three fastballs. And that's over for a strike, so three and one. Play these American League teams even when they're here. In, uh, without the DH, they still rely on offense. That's the way they're built. And for the White Sox, they are the, from a runs per game standpoint, the worst in the American League. Now there's ball four. Diaz is aboard with a leadoff walk. But in their three game series against the Tigers, they scored 22 runs in those three games. Well, it's time now for our Nissan Keys. To the well, this is the day part of the day night doubleheader. Petty Boney seems to keep getting better, and that's what the Phillies are hoping. And the White Sox are here. Well, the Phillies need to play them like they're the Braves and the Nats because you have three games left to the All Star break. You're going to play three games in a hurry now. And concentration really necessary because these guys, as you see right there, they're going to come out and hit and run the bases. And Diaz is on his way to third. The throw goes to second, rightfully so. And now they've got Ramirez tied up. He wants to get in a rundown to see if Deaza can go home. Franzen runs it back toward first. This is taking a long time. And Ruff uh, applied the tag to get the out. I was waiting for John Tumpane, the first base umpire, to signal something. But he waited and waited and then finally made the call. That hesitation cost uh, Ruff a, a few seconds. He, he was startled. He looked back and wondered, is he out or not? And, and the thing that really made that play, I think, was... Uh, Ramirez misread what Dominic Brown was going to do there, but Dominic looked like he was going to go to third on the play, and then all of a sudden he throws it to second, and he had taken that big turn around first base, and they get the, in the rundown, and the rundown took too long. See right there how he looked like he was going to go to third, and then he goes to second, and Ramirez does do a good job of staying in the rundown for a long time, but the Phillies keep watching third, watching third, and making sure that uh, there's no play. That he doesn't score, and there's that little bit of a delay you were talking about. Now Alex Rios who takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Rios hitting 278 with 11 home runs and 40 runs batted in. He also had a good series against the Tigers. He was 7 for 13. Had a change up, waved at it's 0 and 2. Phillies will concede the run here in the top of the first and hope to get the out. Although now the middle infielders are moving up a few steps. Yeah, with two strikes, they moved him in a little bit. Figure maybe he'll nub one now. Swing and a miss. He got it. That's a huge strikeout for the first inning for Pettibone. Yeah, hopefully they ran themselves out of this inning, and then the, with the strikeout, you still have to get through Dunn, which is never easy. But he throws a really good breaking ball here to Rios, and that's, oh well, no, it's just a fastball away. I thought it was a breaking ball when he threw it, but with that swing that he had at it. But it was a fastball. He was just trying to foul it off at the last second. Well, now two outs, and here's Adam Dunn, the home run leader for the White Sox with 24. They play him to pull, much like teams defend 
Ryan Howard with three infielders on the right side and Kevin Franzen in shallow right field. Right, you can play him way back there with two outs because he doesn't run all that well. But Dunn is an unbelievable low ball hitter, always has been, and has hit well in this park. Diaz is way down the line at third, and that's because Young so far off the line. Right, and all that Pettibone has to do is ignore him and not let him distract him. Dunn will walk a lot, he'll strike out a lot, and he'll hit homers. It's like they're being awfully careful with him. Sure are. Although BC8 is nothing to sneeze about in the on deck circle. Dunn might have a 3 0 green light. He may have had one. That pitch was up a little bit. See that Adam Dunn play it seems like forever. And every time he's up there, it seems like he has a full count. <laughs> he just sees so many pitches. Three balls, two strikes with two outs. And a foul ball. Let's take a look at our Mazda leaders, and Adam Dunn is among the active leaders in home runs. Five behind Jason Giambi, and just one ahead of his injured teammate Paul Konerko. A lot of homers. Again, the 3 2 pitch. Outside ball four. And that'll put runners on first and third. Second walk of the inning. Issued by Pettibone. His home runs may overall lead the lead all of Major League Baseball history and altitude also. Kingman probably the close second or one and one A. Those two hit the high hit the highest home runs. Now with two outs here is Dion Vicieto. See his numbers overall, and he taps the first pitch foul. It's 0 and 1. I think we're being careful with Dunn, then got back and tried to get a pitch away to him to maybe chase or take, and then take their chances with Vicieto, the, the right handed hitter. White Sox signed Vicieto uh, out of Cuba. Signed up to a four year deal at $10 million. Inside, one ball, one strike. Change up, and it's one and two. He's pretty good now. Outfielder could throw too. Yeah, there are a lot of folks that think that if uh, Alex Rios is traded, they may move him over to right field because of his arm. Well, he's grown pretty comfortable over in left field. Here's the one-two pitch. It fouled on the right field line. Hot, very getting very hot. Supposed to get hotter and hotter today, and uh, a day where you don't want to throw a lot of pitches, although. They look at Pettibone right now as a guy to go five, maybe six innings. And you can use a bullpen more than you normally would in the fact you're going to play three games real quick. Some of the current conditions. Swing and a miss. He got him with a cutter. Two walks, two strikeouts in the first inning for Pettibone. He works out of a jam. It was a nice job. He had to throw a lot of pitches, 21 and all, to get through the top of the first. Well, this is a big strikeout to throw that cutter, get BCA to go fishing. And we go to the bottom of the first here at Philadelphia.
First, let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup for game one of this day night doubleheader. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Ben Revere. Jimmy Rollins bats second. Michael Young hits third, followed by Dominic Brown and Delman Young. Kevin Franzen makes the start at second base. Darren Ruff, the first baseman, hits seventh. Ruiz eighth, and Jonathan Pettibone will bat ninth. And they'll face 28 year old left hitter John Danks. At one point, this was one of the better left handed pitchers in baseball, but he's coming back from shoulder surgery. And it does take time to come back from shoulder surgery. And yeah, talking to Steve Stone, who's one of their broadcasters, a long time guy uh, that used to be with the Cubs and is over here. He's talking about Danks. He said his fastball is getting a little bit better all of a sudden, though. He said he pitches inside, uses his changeup well, and there's a scouting report on him. And if he can get his fastball back a little bit, they think he'll be all right. Ben Rivera will lead it off for the Phillies. He takes outside. He evidently really does compete. See his numbers on the road though are really bad, and their numbers on the road are just off. Yeah, he's 0-5 with an ERA of 6.43 in five road starts this season. That's over for a strike. Ben Revere has hit a nine straight games. He's 13 for 30 on this homestand. We'll get into some of Ben's numbers as the day moves on, but this is a a run that you're not going to see that often. The kind of run that Ben Revere has been on since the first of May. Yeah, he didn't want a night off last night. He pulls that one through the hole on the right side. It's a 10 game hitting streak. Both games today are also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. Bill Kulik is to your left and Ricky Ricardo is to your right. Jimmy Rollins 0 for his last nine will stand in right handed against Danks with a rudder at first. I'd like to thank Ricky for helping us with the pronunciation pronunciation of, of pronunciation of <laughs> the, the, the Latin word was easier than the English word <laughs> Viciedo. <laughs> thank you Ricky. Dion Viciedo. No balls one strike to Rollins. And Rollins pulls it toward third backhanded on one hop by Gillespie. They go to second for one. They won't turn the double play. Revere had to wait because he wasn't sure if that ball was going to be caught in the air. So there was no chance for him to make it even close at second base. It was a really nice play by Gillespie. Wow. That looked like he had a chance to be a double down the line when he hit it because he hit it pretty hard. There you see Ben has to hold up as Tom said because that ball was in the air for a long time. And you sure don't want to get doubled up on a ball that goes over into that area. That'll bring Michael Young to the plate. He's hit in six straight. Young is six for 25 lifetime against Danks. He's not as hot as Ben Revere is, but Michael Young is. Really hit the baseball well over the last month and a half. In fact, if you take a look at his month by month numbers, April he hit 341. May he hit 172. But in June he hit 333. And here in July he's hitting 303. I know you can't take out the whole month, but even if he hit 250 in the month of May, he might be a 300 hitter. That's out toward right center field. That's where a lot of his balls have been going. That one's going to go to the wall on one hop. Rollins is heading to third. Ryan Sandberg will hold him as the throw goes up the third base line. It'll be a double for Young that puts runners on second and third. I'm just going to say before he hit that too that his production is so much better now than it was earlier in the year. He was a 300 hitter with a lot of singles and not as much advance of runners with those singles. But now he's driving the ball to right and right center. The weather's hotter, the ball's carrying better, and he's getting better swings. And you see this thing really jumps to right center. Now, I don't know whether Jimmy Rollins didn't get a good jump on this. He thought it was going to be caught or not. But it does come right off the wall on one hop right there to Deaza. And with Dominic Brown coming up and only one out, Ryan Sandberg said, I'm not going to get a guy thrown out with 
for the cleanup guy coming up who's swinging like this guy. Dominic Brown 64 runs batted in. He had four hits in the series against the Nats. And then he threw a changeup at its 0 and 1. White Sox kind of ran themselves out of something in the first inning. Phillies didn't want to do that there, and they don't want to leave any leave them out there either. White Sox have the infield back, the outfield straight away. And they're going to give you a run on a ground ball past the pitcher now. They're all way back, too. It's not like they're pinching them at the corners. This is a gimme run on a ground ball in the infield that gets by the pitcher. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Gene McBride of Morristown. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, and Gene will win two hundred dollars. Browns in the hole, 0 2. And he fights it off, foul. Really would like to get off to a good start with all this baseball you're going to play today, and then right back at him tomorrow at 135. Have a positive thought right out of the shoot here, as opposed to if you leave guys on. Couple that with the way they got out of the top of the first inning. Right, exactly. Rollins is at third. Young's at second. One out, bottom of the first. Part of the success they had in the top of the first was Brown throwing to the correct base. I know that makes oh, you're supposed to throw. Well, the guys don't. And when he threw to second, that got uh, Ramirez coming around first base too aggressively. Little dribbler back toward the middle. That'll get a run home. Ramirez charges, throws in time to get Brown. One nothing Phillies. That's a real good job by Dominic Brown there because he was having trouble with all that junk that Banks was throwing up there too. He was having, really having trouble timing it, and it was even potential swing and a miss stuff. And he was able to just nub it, but that's all he had to do there. Just get it by the pitcher and they get a run out of it. Good job not to strike out. See, he's way out in front again. But that long wingspan of his, he hits it right off the end of the bat and gets an RBI out of it. So Dominic Brown is 65th RBI of the year. Here's Delman Young who pulls it down the left field line. It's a fair ball, one hop off the base of the wall. Young will score. Delman Young's going to second. The throw is in time. Count the run. It's an RBI single for Delman Young. And the Phillies take a 2 0 lead. Two runs, three hits. Nobody left. We go to the second here in Philadelphia.
Lawrence. It winds down on Thursday, August 1st with the Brad Lidge Retirement Ceremony. A free print for all fans. Compliments of Toyota. Come out and see the Phillies take on the defending World Series champions, the San Francisco Giants. You can get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. We head to the second. Phillies lead it 2 0 after a productive first on both ends. And Connor Gillespie will lead it off. And he pulls the first pitch towards second. Nice play by Franz and to his left. One away. And with that, we welcome in the president of the Philadelphia Phillies, David Montgomery, who's kind enough to join us up here in the booth. Busy day, game one of a day night doubleheader. Busy day. And, uh, you know, we really uh, we owe our fans uh, once again a thank you uh, for making the adjustments to make this possible. This is probably, uh, you know, with all the rain we've had in June and whatnot, we've been very fortunate this year as far as the impact on our games. But it probably couldn't have rained a, a worse night, a Friday night before the All Star break and whatnot. Um, you know, we have. We have Players that are scattering all over the place tomorrow and whatnot, and uh, obviously we're going to see the White Sox just one time. But uh, if things hold up, uh, the good news is we should be able to get both games in today, and, and that's wonderful. And we really appreciate you know, the fans for this first game that understood the reason to uh, start an hour earlier. What what goes into when you when you have to reschedule to a day night doubleheader as far as talking to both? To the players, to the league, all, all those kind of things. What goes into that? Well, the the, the new uh, collective bargaining agreement wheels enables us uh, uh, to play two, and that's two total home and road in the course of a year before you before you have to go uh, specifically and get both teams' permission. In this case, we were fortunate in that uh, we have not had any until today. This is our first, and the White Sox had had one previously, so this was their second. So. Um, because if you get into that shuttle diplomacy that you have to talk to the league and then they have to talk to the players association and then they have to talk to both teams it can get a little little crazy. And we knew uh, frankly that uh, the players preference would be to play two today rather than to play uh, you know a, a, a day night tomorrow which probably would have been what we would have done otherwise. Ben Revere on the run on this ball hit by Beckham it's over his head and it's uh, one hop off the wall. He kicked it back toward the infield and Beckham's on his way to third. So that'll be a two out triple with the pitcher John Danks coming up. And then the other um, complication uh, is the fact that uh, when you when you get into splits on the weekend you're talking about uh, uh, situations where we have uh, national TV commitments. And so the reason we played at 405 today was because uh, we, if we play in, in the uh, prime window from 7 to 10, we can't televise. And so, uh, you know, we, 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 they were great uh, as far as uh, MLB and Fox is, because we are going to be able to televise the second game today. Um, but that becomes a factor. And then on Sundays, you have the, the factor with the ESPN Sunday game. So, uh, yeah, there's a few things that have to happen and uh, the, the, sadly yesterday I wouldn't say we got caught by surprise but the forecast just deteriorated as the day went on. I mean by midday they were telling us that things probably would uh, move out of here by seven or eight last night and then that system just sat in here and uh, as it turned out we, we definitely uh, have to credit Mike Stiles who, who takes the brunt of this but uh, <laughs> definitely made the right decision uh, we believe yesterday. This, you know, we're about presenting entertainment, and and for fans here for fireworks last night, if they're sitting here from two hours of rain and waiting and waiting, uh, you know, not the right thing. Well, Jonathan Pettibone leaves one over at third base here at the top of the second. He picks up his third strikeout. David will stay with us as we go to the bottom of the second here at South Philadelphia. The Phillies on top two nothing.
this three game series. There are tickets available for tonight's ball game. And a reminder that the Xfinity fireworks show previously scheduled for last night is tonight after the 815 ball game against the Sox. And don't forget tomorrow a 135 start all fans 15 and older will receive the, uh, the the travel mug. It's a great giveaway. So if you want to stop by the box office you can do so at any time today or go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets. Tom you're good with those promos. Got them all down. <laughs> we'll be talking about the, uh, the the giveaway tomorrow. It's it's a new giveaway the uh, the mug uh, which it's a great giveaway. For yeah it, to is. Come to the it is. You know we uh, we have a group uh, you know Kurt Funk is is in charge of, uh, our, of our fan development and our uh, our uh, uh, entertainment uh, group and uh, Oh, my name is Scott Brandreth in particular. He he's uh, he's the one that goes out and researches all the uh, various premium items that are out there. I think he's done a great job for us. Well, uh, Kurt was a little nervous today because he had the clinic on the field before the uh, ball game. I'll tell you, the Chevy you know, folks had the clinic going on. There are uh, there are so many uh, things get moved around <laughs> on days like this, and and uh, you know Chris Lego. Uh, uh, at this point, Chris Long is as she has been great as far as. Uh, and managing our pregame for years, Wheels, as you oh, know. Yeah. I, you know, one of the great, uh, <laughs> interesting by plays that, that Chris and I witnessed for years was, was our friend John Bukovic, Mr. Baseball, and, and, and Chrissy going head to head oh. as to, you know, but what event do you have for us today? What do we have to watch before we can play a he, game? He, right? nick, he nicknamed her Topper. And right. He'd say, he'd say, well, what are you right. going to, you're going to top Circus this tent. one today? Yeah. Circus yeah. tent, Topper. Yeah. Double, yeah. Uh, double meeting there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh. And uh, and then you know the, the last thing is that our our, uh, our uh, global spectrum people who are in charge of the facility we have to turn this game, this uh, ballpark over between maybe six o'clock tonight when this one ends and uh, and seven when we let people in for the for the nightcap so a lot happens but hopefully it'll all work out well and again let me go back to my initial point uh, our fans are great they, you know they wait. And, they understand, I think, for the most part, we try to put them first. I mean, the reality is you don't want 40-some thousand people here for fireworks to sit in rain and then wait till fireworks go off maybe at midnight or later. Uh, you know, it would have been at least that last night. Yeah, so well, it got caught up a little nor'easter last night. It was nice that Mike Stiles could make a, a judgment considering he was a judge. Well, we have to we have to give our friends at, uh, at National Weather some, uh, you know, uh, plugs as well because they've done a nice job for us and Michael checks in there yes. constantly so you know, it's a team effort. Well Darren Ruff is up with one out as Fran, uh, Kevin Franzen went down on strikes. Ruff is hitting 375 so far this year and it's one ball and one strike to him. Dank's working quickly. The ball's hit out towards center field. Playable for Deaza. See how hot it is here today because you can always tell you look how the pitcher and the visiting team they have a gray uniform. That baby is dark in a hurry, and Danks is soaking wet already. And it's only the second inning. It's a little humid here at this point. Carlos Ruiz is due up. Hey, David, we read a promo before you came on for Brad Lidge's retirement ceremony uh, that will take place when the Giants are in town. Tell us a little bit about that and, uh, and what went well, into that. You know idea. what has been really nice, uh, uh, Tom? We've had now probably uh, four or five players. I mean, uh, 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 I guess it started uh, started with a, our friend Doug Glanville, uh, who, uh, who came to us after his career was over and said, "You know, I enjoyed my time in Philadelphia so much that if you guys could figure out a way technically to have me retire as a as a Philly, I'd like to do it." Mike Lieberthal did it, and, and uh, Pat Burrell did it, and, and now to have Brad feel that way, and I, I may even be missing somebody, but. The reality is that uh, you know, Lich has been great. He, you know, he had that magical moment that uh, you know, when you think about it, Tug's moment on the mound and Brad's moment on the mound are, are yeah. the are the pinnacle for this franchise. Uh, and uh, it's great that he feels that way about our organization. He did something really wonderful this year. You know, we have uh, we have a, a player development uh, a program run for some of our minor leaguers. We do it to. Probably the second week in January, and we asked different people to come back and speak. And Brad this year, um, you know, flew in from from uh, from Denver and, and and spoke to him. And uh, you know, I wasn't there for that session. I was there for part of it uh, this year. But uh, uh, Mike Ando, who runs it, and Ruben and others said that Brad just did did a fantastic job. And uh, 
He loves this organization, which is wonderful. Well, it's going to be great to see him. And again, it's the Giants series, and there will be a ceremony prior to the start of the ball game. And of course, the print that will be given out uh, during that series against the San Francisco Giants. You, see, you, you mentioned the World Series with Tug and, and Lidge's moments. Both those World Series end in the ultimate way with a strikeout. Like yeah. we, we could see the pitcher right. really celebrate. Nothing wrong with a fly ball in the outfield. And, but I, and I don't think, uh, unlike uh, Schmitty, who Typical Schmidt, he had already orchestrated yeah. what he was going to do with uh, with Tugger uh, if it happened. Uh, I think uh, I think Chuch and, and 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 Brad just it just came natural, don't you, Will? That was spontaneous, and you're right. They had to choreograph the other one. Right, they Tugger did. Schmidt on their way in one, on the way into the ballpark. Ruiz hits it foul behind home plate, and it's the upper Mike, deck. Mike, play. Mike told Tug Sounds McGraw. Like somebody made a good catch in front us here, huh? Yep. Mike told Tug McGraw. He said, you know. I know you're going to be in there tonight, and I want to be in that picture at the end. <laughs> oh, he made it. He said, so wait for me. And he did. You've got to give Lee Ilya credit. He got out quickly that day, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> the Ozid center makes the catch side is retired in order. Well, David, we appreciate your time as always. always. man. And uh, we look forward to not only the rest of this one, but also game two of this day night. Double. Well, thank you. Hopefully it's a good day for the Phillies. All right. So the Phillies uh, obviously up to nothing here. We talked a lot about Brad Lidge. We'll bring back the final out of the 2008 World Series. The 0 2 10 swing and a miss. Struck him out. The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World Champions of Baseball. Brad Lynch does it again and stays perfect for the 2008 season. .com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer. Uh, the subject line wheels. Here's the question. Who was the first player ever to hit grand slams in both games of a doubleheader? Answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Wow. Good question. Yeah. Deaza will lead it off as we go to the third. He takes strike one. Deaza walked his first time up and then was left over at third. Yeah, as we said, they, they kind of ran themselves out of that first inning. Yeah. Pettibone was in a little bit of trouble right out of the shoot, and then the Phillies come back and get two good momentum for them right out, right away. Good change up, one and two. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Twins and the Yankees uh, started early today. The Twins broke a 1 1 tie in the seventh. And they now lead the Yankees 4 1. Joe Maurer, two hits, a double. Phil Hughes was the starter in that one for the Yankees. He was humming along. The Yankees lost uh, Derek Jeter again, at least uh, until after the All Star break. There's a chance they're going to put him back on the disabled list with a quad strain. After playing in just part of one game, 
after being on the DL all season long. Out to right field, Delman Young floats back to the track and makes the catch. Got in on him with a slider cutter there. Something of a, of a breaking ball that moved and really jammed him. Oh, one out. Alexei Ramirez, the hitter. Pettibone has settled down since that first inning, and I guess it's all part. Murph of the maturation of Jonathan Pettibone. You know, Tom, it certainly seems that way. Every time you ask his manager, Charlie Manuel, you know, to describe Jonathan Pettibone and uh, what he sees in him, the first thing he says, he really likes the way he battles. And the second thing he says is his confidence. He continues to, to build with his confidence level. His ability to get in and out of jams uh, has really been remarkable <laughs> in his young career so far. So, you know, he gets in those jams, but, but is able to get out of them as well. And Carlos Ruiz, his catcher, was also talking about that yesterday. And he said, you know what? I really like this young guy's confidence. It's the word you hear over and over again with Jonathan Pettibone. And you know what? Anytime you play a professional sport, these athletes, they, they need that confidence level. We've seen it time and time again with different guys. And Pettibone so far has shown a lot of it. Well, it certainly helps by being able to pitch inside the way he has to the first two hitters here in the third. And Rich Doobie continues to say that there's more in Pettibone mm -hmm. than even what he's showing. What he means by that. Murph is that there's more in, more in his fastball. He, well, he has more for secondary pitches. Yeah, and that's what they're working on in their side sessions. You know, trying to extend them a little. He's a big guy, and they want him to use his height uh, to his advantage. And they think that they can get even more out of him. But uh, his ability to work both sides of the plate has been something that both Rich and Charlie Manuel have talked about that they've been impressed with. So you know, obviously, a young guy like Jonathan Pettibone is going to continue to get better. At least that, you know that is certainly the hope. Uh, but uh, he's been pretty good so far in this young part of his career. Yeah. And the point you're making there, Murph, about both sides of the play. Young pitchers normally can't command their fastball right away at the major league level, and he can do that. Oh, he's ahead 0-2 to Alex Rios. Swing and a miss. He got him with a changeup. Fourth strikeout of the afternoon for Petty Bone, and he retires the White Sox in order here in the third. He used just 10 pitches. Pretty good job after a lengthy first inning. We go to the bottom of the third, fills up two. By Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today and buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Bottom of the third. Phillies up 2 nothing. There's always some traffic going on down in Chinatown. Here's Pettibone as we begin the third. He takes a strike. Almost built the ballpark down there one time. Yeah, there was that thought. No, at sure. The beginning. That was the second location. 0 2 to Pettibone. What was the first one? The the first one was at 30th Street. Oh, that's was right. What they talked about. Right. And, you know, they, they, and then the real first one was the one that was going to be at the Vine Street. Pettibone down yeah. looking on strikes. Broad and Spring Garden up there by the old Inquirer Daily News building. And then the Chinese, uh, the, the, uh, the Chinatown one came along after that. And then, of course, built this beautiful facility down here. 
No, it's worked out with all the parking and the fact that all the sports teams play here in this complex. One gone here in the third. Ben Revere, who singled his first time, one for one. Ben has now hit in 14 of his last 15 games. During that time, he has 19 multi hit games. Next time Danks pitched against the Phillies, Rollins, Victorino, Utley, Howard, Burrow, Worth, Helms at third, Barajas was a catcher, and Kyle Kendrick was a starter. There's still fuel morale. Yeah, we showed that graphic at the beginning of the telecast. But Danks is the only active player on the White Sox still around. Gavin Floyd and Paul Konerko both injured. Well, the no pitchers, pitchers in that game were Kendrick, Madsen, Zagurski, Hernandez, and Alfonseca. Antonio. Yep. Ooh. He got jammed. <laughs> Looking around to see where the ball went. Oh, I thought that ball hit him in the fingers as he swung. It didn't hit much bat. No, it didn't. Foul. And it remains one ball and two strikes to Ben Revere. Get more out of the game. Don't just watch on TV. Use your computer, smartphone, or tablet to log on to CSN Philly and get in depth stats and join the social conversation. You game live only at CSNPhilly.com. The third base line that'll roll foul. You know, I was thinking about that, Wheels, about Kendrick. That was his major league debut. Yep. Six innings, six hits, three runs, hit a batter, struck out four. Remember Charlie going to uh, Jim Tomey afterward? I think Tomey, yeah, he did. He played in that game and asked him what he thought of Kendrick. Jim Tomey now a member of the White Sox front office as a special assistant right to their general manager Rick Hahn. Two two pitch to Revere and a chopper back over the mound charging Ramirez gets to it quickly not in time and it's another multi hit game for the smoking hot Ben Revere. Amazing. He's just getting all kinds of hits too. These are the kind you thought he'd get a lot of when the Phillies first signed him. A lot of these infield hits because of his speed. That wasn't happening for him. Nothing was happening for him. Now he's hitting the ball really hard, and he'll still get those infield hits when he bleeds one like that because of his speed. Well, his average now is at 309, so he's raised it five points in his first two at bats. And Ramirez is pretty slick shortstop. Did everything he could to make that play. Change up outside, one and out to Rollins. Revere has stolen 22 bases. As you take a look at the 29th two hit game, and the 10th in his last 15. Thanks, drives that slide step. The catcher, Josh Fegley, who is who hasn't been in the big leagues all that long is 0 for 4 throwing runners out but he was 24 for 59 in the minor leagues his percentage was over 40 percent throwing runners out well, it's impressive Throw a lot of change ups away get the hole to shoot at when he comes in on him there a change up away is really a good pitch to hit the ball in the hole to the right side he just took cutter in and a lot of times a pitcher that throws a lot of change ups like this will go cut her in change up away. Cole Hamels does that quite a bit. Very nice. 
slide step and another change up it's two and two. Pitcher of course wants to throw a change up to a right handed hitter in that spot to speed his bat up and hook it make him hook it into an, an easy out or even a double play. Rollins pulls it through the hole on the left side of base hit. Rivera stop at second. That'll put runners on first and second with one out. And Michael Young will be the next hitter. Well, Jimmy hit two hard ground balls that they won a spectacular play by the third baseman Gillespie, and there he finds a hole. During the 2013 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Of the longtime pitching coach for the Chicago White Sox, Don Cooper heads out to the mound to talk to John Danks. Coop was the pitching coach when Ozzie Gian was the manager of the White Sox. The, uh, the White Sox now have a, a real Philadelphia touch to their to their coaching staff, not Cooper. Well, there you see the Chai Sox connection with. With Jeff Manto, who's here for a coach, as a coach right now, Mark Parent and Jim Tomey and Bobby Thigpen. And they have another Philadelphia area guy down there, and Joe McEwing yeah, is their third base coach. Jim Tomey is a special assistant uh, to the White Sox general manager, Rick Hahn. And Wheels mentioned Joe McEwing, who is a Bristol, Pennsylvania native, went to uh, Bishop Egan High School. And Jeff Manto's from up in that area, too. Yep, went to Temple University. Michael Young is up with runners on first and second. And he takes outside. One ball, no strikes. Mark Parents down there with Robin Ventura. He did a really good job as a Phillies uh, minor league manager, as you saw in there in a couple stops. And he's hard to miss. That's a big man. Nicknamed Bernie. Fedley throws out Young. The runners move up to second and third. I think he got fooled a little bit on that change. Yeah, just a little bit. There, there are two outs. He's frustrated with himself. Yeah. He got himself out there <laughs> after he scalded that ball last time to right center. Now that's a real good weapon for a left-handed pitcher. Guy looking fastball, throw him a change up, get him way out front. That's a pitch at Michael Young, which is darn. I wish I'd have swung and missed it then. Instead of hitting a number. Phillies do have a chance though to get a couple of runs with a base hit. You got Revere at third, Rollins at second, and Dominic Rado has an RBI at the plate. And it's one ball and no strikes. Well, as you mentioned, Mark Parent managing the Phillies organization. He won a South Atlantic League championship with the Lakewood Blue Claws, and then with the Reading Phillies the following year was 74 and 68. And went to the postseason in the Eastern League. That was 2011. Yeah, they really liked him in the system, and then he got an opportunity to be a big league coach. And why not? He was in with Charlie the other day, and they came into his office, and they sat there and had a really nice talk. Charlie's one of those guys that really give his time to talk baseball. He, Steve Stone was saying that about him today. He went down there for about 20 minutes with him, just sat there, talked the game, and how enjoyable it was. Steve Stone does the uh, color commentating on the White Sox telecasts. See Charlie's numbers against the Sox, two games under 500. Those years with the Cleveland Indians. 
made up some ground the last time these two teams faced each other when the Phillies swept the White Sox. Low three and one to Dominic Brown. Delman Young has hit. Thanks. There's a good broadcast team over there. Steve Stone on the left and Ken Hawk Harrelson on the right. Both those guys were in there hanging out for a while today. It was so much fun to catch up with them. Hadn't seen him for a long time. The Hawk, he's a piece of work. Fly ball, center field. Deaza signals to Rios that he's got a beat on it. And the Phillies leave a couple in scoring position here at the bottom of the third. No runs, two hits, and two men left. We go to the fourth. The Phillies hang it on to a two run lead. Whether it's a candy bar to satisfy your sweet tooth or a healthy snack to keep you in playing shape, WB Mason has all the bases covered. Who but WB Mason? Oh, a warm afternoon here in South Philadelphia. Game one of a day night doubleheader the Phillies and the Chicago White Sox. The last interleague series of the season here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies scored two first inning runs and now. Jonathan Pettibone will go to work against Adam Dunn, BC Ato, and Connor Gillespie. Adam Dunn walked his first time up in what certainly seemed to be a pitch around. And I'm sure it's happened more often than not in Adam Dunn's career, despite all the strikeouts. Yeah, almost to a fault that he knows the strike zone so well. He doesn't seem to pull the trigger on pitches that are close. Power numbers, however, are pretty good. 24 homers, 60 stakes. RBIs, that is. Well, his problem is he needs. Somebody else in that lineup to help him out. Yeah, with Canerco out with an injury, and he was having a tr uh, terrible year anyway. You know, Rios has had an okay year as the three hitter. Vicieto behind him, not having the same kind of offensive year as he had a season ago. It limits Adam Dunn a little bit. Still has 60 RBIs though. Yeah. Two and two. And they try to get a change up by him. Good pitch. Good location down and away. Now that's a problem too with a lot of players, especially young players, can't always put down the same numbers. Ground ball right side Rollins will let it go friends and picks it up throws to first in time to get Adam Dunn from shallow right center field one away. 
Well, he thought he had himself ahead as you see smiles there on Jimmy Rollins. Almost unfair to get thrown out in the outfield. Take a look at this ball as it goes right through where J Row is. Branson making a backhanded play. Obviously, Dunn doesn't have a lot of good uh, speed at all, more of a power. A hitter those 24 home runs but an excellent play by Francis. Well Ke uh, Robin Ventura has come out to argue with John Tumpain. Uh, we just saw the replay obviously it looked like he was out. Uh, it looked like he was out in the naked eye but it certainly looked that way on the replay. Robin does not get all that heated. You know, that's really the length of his emotion. Would you agree with that? Yeah well only his second year managing to rookie last year. And you know, it takes some time to get acclimated back into this game, and no matter what level you're on. Well, he's not letting it go. Brian Onora, who is the acting crew chief, with Field and Colbert having the first game off, has come over, and he's just listening in. Yeah, and that's protecting your player and letting your player know, hey, man, I'm concerned about you getting hit. More so concerned about maybe winning the ball game, but it all starts with those hits, and he's just protecting his player. Let's see where the ball is coming right now. Well, it was closer than I thought, but he was out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, big guys never get the benefit of the doubt. You no, know, the speedy guys are the ones that. When it's really close or at the same time, we'll get the benefit of the doubt on those. Good play, however, by Franson. Excellent play by Kevin Franson. A throw across his body like that. Here's Vicieto. Vicieto is first time up, struck out. And that's interesting, too, because that's a play you don't really practice from that particular angle. No, but that's a guy that you can see has a shortstop arm in France, and he doesn't oh. play a shortstop anymore. But you know, that's a strong arm. Yeah, he had that ball just whipped it right over the first base. Two and one to BCA though. It'll be foul. It'll be far, but it'll be foul. Well, he's pretty quick with that. Might want to go back down to that little slider. The fastball away. On the outside corner. There's that fastball away, Sarge. Five strikeouts for Pettibone. That's an excellent pitch after he set him up inside. Guess what he comes back with right on the black there. Good pitch there by Pettibone. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team one two three and Pettibone did it in the third. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity your home for the most live sports giving you all your favorite sports all year long. Gillespie grounded out to second his first time up. Good opportunity for a lot of the younger players there with the White Sox. They are definitely in a rebuilding situation. So if you could hit the minor leagues, you got a good chance of being able to come up to showcase yourself. On the outside corner, a cutter back to back looking strikeouts for Pettibone. He's retired seven straight. He has four strikeouts during that stretch. Including this one to wrap up the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We played three and a half.
Bottom line sales event, choose a better way to drive and save. Shop ChooseNissan.com today. By Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? And by Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Home half of the fourth inning. Phillies up 2 nothing. Delman Young singled and drove in a run his last time up. It was thrown out trying to stretch that single into a double. Out of play off to the right, 0 and 2. John Danks, even with the injury that he sustained, which cost him basically a year on the mound with shoulder surgery, as Young lines one to deep left field. It is off the top of the wall and it kicks away from Vicieto. No issues this time for Delman. He finally gets his double. And the Phillies have the leadoff batter aboard here in the fourth inning. They will take a look here too at Delvin Young as he tippy toes right in the second base. Take a look at how he gets back. That's his load back there. Hits against that front foot. Take a look at it again. Now this was a change up. The reason he hit it, he kept his hands back. Almost got it out of the ballpark. Almost as if he was looking for that pitch. And that's what you call a hitter really hitting a pitcher's really good pitch. Kind of down and a little bit away. Was to hit part of that small fence up above the green fence in left field. That's why it shot awkwardly away from Vicieto. Ground ball left side. Franz is unable to get Young over to third. And there, there is one away. Well, we talk every now and then about a team you like to face and you feel good. Well, this is just the opposite. This is the team here with Franz doesn't feel good against and hitting against period throughout his career. See that's what I'm talking about. He's got to have nightmares anytime anyone says White Sox to him. Oh he's 0 for 9 now against John Danks. Now you couple that. With the fact that he's 0 for 20 against the White Sox. So again, just the opposite, <laughs> guys. You don't want to. It's really don't want, It is, and uh, even though it's a lefty, and you know that, again, that ball's coming right into you. He doesn't seem to have comfortable swings. Two and zero to Darren Ruff, who fly to center his first time up. Guys are doing a good job. The hitting guys are getting getting the hitters to really start their load a little bit quicker, meaning getting their hands back. You know, the quicker you get them back with slow feed, the slower the ball will seem to you. We gave him the green light with the count three zero. It's, it's amazing. I mean, if you are a hitter, oh. if you are. <laughs> A hitter that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. You have to love to play for Charlie May. Well, he lets the pitchers hit with uh, no strikes on him or going right up there to the plate. He, he likes to see hits, and you're right about it. Ball four, and Ruff draws the one out walk. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for your iPhone, iPad, iPad Mini, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Phillies baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Phillies.com for details. Carlos fly to center his first time. He's 0 for 1. And he lines one foul. Starting to get quicker and quicker. We've seen him hit a lot more balls really hard. 
right up the middle. Hope everybody's okay. It always takes you a pretty long time to really get back acclimated after you've had injuries or you've been out for a while to catch up to Major League pitching. Ground ball towards short. That could be two. There's one, and they've got time to turn it. 6 4 3 double play. Side is retired. The Phillies leave one in scoring position. We've completed four. Back to work for Jonathan Pettibone when we return for the fifth. Conversations with five of the Eagles top draft picks watch new to the nest presented by Woodbury Nissan on sports night all next week at 6 and 10 only on Comcast sports Net. Yeah, it's going to be that time of year again right around the corner to training camp getting underway. We go to the top of the fifth Phillies up two nothing. Josh Pegley Gordon Beckham and John Danks will be the scheduled hitters against Jonathan Pettibone. Pettibone's retired seven straight. Pegley grounded out his last time. And he pulls that one through the hole. A base hit. It's the first hit since the second. Since the triple by Beckham. And Beckham is due up. Let's check in with Murph, who's with a very special guest. Murph, take it away. Yeah, and a very busy man. This is Mike DiMuzio. He is the director of operations here at Citizens Bank Park for the Phillies. And, uh, Mike, you and I were just chatting about uh, the decisions that are made uh, to, to do a game like this, a, a split uh, doubleheader. Uh, yesterday at about 530, I would imagine your uh, stress level was, was probably a red alert at, at that time. Well, we try not to get too stressful because these things have happened before. So you just get into doubleheader mode and, and proceed from there. You know, these kind of decisions are really, they affect 80,000 plus people when you have to make these decisions. What's the biggest challenge uh, in, in deciding that you're going to go this route, have two games in one day, and you're going to have to clear the ballpark at one point. Right. The, uh, the first overall uh, thing I think we think about, obviously, is the fans and how much, how least we can inconvenience our fans from last night to tonight. And then you have to get into your worker mode, and, and we need 100% commitment from our employees, which we have. Uh, we need the commitment from the cleaning staff through Global Spectrum. 
uh, and they're able to come up with their workers in between game, and we give them a time frame that we need the ballpark clean, then we go from there. You know, and obviously uh, it's also dictated by the way the game goes, the length of the game, but uh, ideally you guys uh, have about an hour to turn it around tonight, and uh, as you said to me, whatever it takes, right? That's the attitude? Correct. The attitude is whatever it takes. Uh, we assumed that this would be about a three-hour game, and, and we would get an hour to clean and then open the ballpark, but... If we get 40 minutes to clean, we'll have it clean in 40 minutes. And if, fortunately, we get an hour and a half, that'll benefit everybody. Well, Mike, we appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy today, so we'll let you go. But we appreciate it. Good luck tonight with the tournament. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mike Demuzio, guys. And, uh, you know, you, you, we talked about the fans and how it affects them. But think about all the workers, guys, inside the ballpark uh, that also are affected by the doubleheader. So uh, congratulations to all of them for getting the job done. Whatever it takes, it's a pretty good model. Yeah, they do a great job. There's no doubt about that. And Mike, of course, is a brand-new grandfather. We want to wish him congratulations. Oh. His son, Michael, had a uh, and his wife uh, had a baby last week. So it's been a busy uh, 10 days or so for Mike oh. Demuzio and the Same. Demuzio family. No balls and one strike to John Danks. This is where maybe you can take advantage of a pitcher not bunting. American League, they don't hit pitchers, so maybe you can pop this up. That one's out in front of the plate. Pettibone will throw to first. The sacrifice is successful. Good job by Danks. Excellent job getting that ball down. It's difficult when you haven't been bunting, but he's. Had pretty good technique, staying on top of the ball. That's why I got right on the ground and even deadening. See so all smiles as he comes back. Well, here's what I'm talking about: staying there on top of it. See how he deadened it there, and set of bones coming all the way over to get the ball. It's a good butt. Carlos Ruiz actually uh, was yelling that he had it, and at the last moment, Pettibone. Uh, reached down and was able to pick it up and throw to first. The corners are in for Deaza. The middle infielders are back with runners on second and third. And it's one ball, no strikes. Deaza 0 for 1. He walked his first time, flied out to right his last time. See that alignment that we talked about? Ruff just moved back a step even with the bag at first. Hits him uh, to him sharply. Go home with it and try to go back maybe the first. Line drive fair just kicked up the chalk it goes down the right field line. One run scores here comes the second run. And Deaza has tied this ball game up at two apiece. That ball was just a hair fair. And Deaza has his 18th double of the year. Well, game of inches and that ball there couldn't have been fair by much more. Thought Darren Ruff might have had a chance to get it. it was just hit too hard. See where Darren was. That ball clearly on the inside. Hit awful hard there. Just on the inside of that uh, line there that you could see. And boy, no problem for him to get a double out of that. So we're even at two here at the top of the fifth. And Alexei Ramirez is the batter. Singled his first time up. And this is when he's pity bones got to really kind of stop the bleeding after you get a few balls that are hit hard off off of you. Over towards short, Rollins is there. He'll get the out at first. Two way. Smart play, taking the out. For years, StubHub has been the place to find great Phillies tickets. And this season, you can get more with your tickets thanks to StubHub Fan Rewards. So get to StubHub and grab your seats today. Rios has struck out twice. You talk to the White Sox brass, they say this guy's the best athlete on the team or at this particular point. Down the line, uh, of some of the younger players might 
get up to that same type of uh, statue to where you feel that they're good players. Coming over from Toronto Blue Jays. Well, the other night, he had six hits in a game. A two time All Star. Played for Puerto Rico in the World Baseball Classic this past offseason. Oh, that six for six was off the Detroit Tigers. Over to third. Nice hop for Michael Young. Rio's barely running up the first base line, and the side is retired. But the White Sox tie it up on a two run double by Alejandro Deaza. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Hetty Bowen will lead it off. Part of Alumni Weekend beginning Friday, August 2nd at 7.05. That is the night that Kurt Schilling will join the Wall of Fame. 7.05 on Friday, 4.05 on Saturday the 3rd, and then Sunday is a 1.35 start. You can get tickets to all three ball games, including the ceremony in which Kurt Schilling is put up on the wall with everybody else, all the great Phillies. You can go to phillies.com. Pettibo takes a high. It's one ball and no strikes. Pettibo struck out looking his first time up. This is one of those games where you feel like the Phillies, if you didn't look at the scoreboard, wouldn't be tied, that they'd be leading by three or four yeah. runs. Well, they score early runs, but you got to chip away and get one here, one there. Just keep adding on. We've seen a lot of these American League clubs, I and mean, they can erupt on you and score runs rapidly before you look up. Game's tied, or they're ahead. There's scored a few balls up there off of Pettibone. Ground ball toward the middle. And then Pettibone's retired, one out. Well, the White Sox are. A team that's underachieving compared to last year, but they are a team that has not had the same lineup every game like they had last year. But they've struggled on the road to a 17 and 32 record. They're one in six on the road against the National League. Since the first of June, though, that's where all their problems have basically come since the first of June. So they're 13 games under 500. Wow. Well, that explains it right there. I mean, they've. Been getting some fairly good uh, pitching, especially that bullpen and that offense just haven't been able to score when it counts. Better Revere takes a strike. Well, you just looked at Robin Ventura, who's in his second year as the manager. He didn't have any professional managerial experience when the White Sox hired him. Broke it back, right back to the mound. Ventura was asked today before the ball game because he he doesn't have a contract after this year. He had been offered an extension and yeah. decided not to sign it yeah. because he wanted to see if he liked 
being a major league manager. He was asked today whether he wanted to be back next year. He said yes. Yeah, good for him then. Maybe starting to get the feeling or starting maybe to think he could uh, make a difference. You know, in being down there as a field manager, but even for him, take some time to get back. Players have changed. It's all the way. It's just a lot different from being there in the front office as opposed to being on the field with the guys. Breaking ball in there for a strike to Rollins, 0 and 1. We'll get a different feel though on how to talk, treat players, the game itself. And I'm sure he's seen some things that you talk to him, you would say, boy, I just can't believe they're not able to get that runner in from third base. And that's going on all over the league, not just with the fields and Bills have been doing a much better job in scoring runs, evident of their record the last two series and and sweeping them. Doesn't matter how old you are. Still pretty neat to get a foul ball. In the dirt, two balls, two strikes to Rollins. Down on strikes, and the side is retired. So Danks all of a sudden has found his zone. He retires the fills in order. We're through five. Game one of this day night doubleheader. The All Stars. Cliff Lee behind double digit wins and a dominating first half, very different from a year ago for the Phillies, has earned his fourth All Star selection during a great career. Dominic Brown, who was voted fourth on the players ballot, was also selected to the National League team for his first trip to the Midsummer Classic. Dom continues his sensational 2013 season. And Cliff Lee continues to be one of the best pitchers in baseball. And their all-star selections are brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, the Fanatic needed to get a couple skits together for a day-night doubleheader. Decided to do a little dance with uh, one of the security guards. Security guard pretty loose right there. Then very serious. Adam Dunn will lead it off here in the sixth. It's 0 1 as he takes a strike. Dunn is walked today. He's grounded out to second. Really, he's grounded out to shallow right field where Kevin Franton is playing. Yeah, it's two pitches in a row. That's what you're talking about when just takes pitches that are just too close to the plate.
Well he does average 4.35 pitches per plate appearance. Well again. Seem like a, a, a whole lot but the fact is. When you take that much yet yeah, you do have a, a good eye. You make a mistake on him and. He can hit that hanger a long way. I'd like for him to hit for a little better average if he was on your team, 207. If he was hitting higher average, he'd have more RBIs and probably a few more home runs. Well, he's walked for the second time. He was behind 02. That Pettibone lost him. Third walk issued by Jonathan. Time now for our Coors Light Cold Hard Fact brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Today marks the Phillies' first ever doubleheader against the White Sox. The last time the Phillies had an interleague doubleheader, June 24th, 2012, against the Tampa Bay Rays. That was the series where Jim Tomey. Hit the ball the opposite way. That ball is pulled down the left field line. It's going to be an extra base hit for Vicieto. And Dunn will pull into third. So for the second straight inning, the White Sox have runners on second and third with less than two outs. As it'll bring Connor Gillespie to the plate. I think that's going to get the bullpen up here in the sixth inning. Yeah, getting balls out over the plate. That ball there, however, was pulled right down the line. So you're probably looking middle in and end that. DeFreitas starts the throw. Ryan Sandberg aligning the defense. He has the corners up a little bit. Now Ruff takes a step back at first. And Gillespie hits it to center field. Revere is back on it. Dunnels will tag. The throw is going to go to third to try to get VCA dough and it's not in time and the White Sox take the lead. It's a 3 2 ball game. It's good base running by VCA dough. Excellent. Knowing the arm there of Ben Revere there in center field that's one of the things that he doesn't do well everything else. He has been doing super hitting base running. But normally you would stop a runner if you're that close from going into third and getting into better scoring position. Fegley singled his last time up. He's one for two. Try and get something either on his hands or way away off the end of the bat. Ground ball to short. He looks the rudder back to third. Rollins does and throws out Fegley. Good play. And there are two outs for Beckham. Danks is not out in the on deck circle yet. And it's decision time for Charlie Manuel down 3 2. Here comes Danks. Nobody's up in the White Sox bullpen, and they will walk him intentionally. Yep. I think that's the right move, don't Have you, Sarge? To, yeah, absolutely. Especially now that they're one run up, you want to let someone go up that doesn't have the experience. And uh, American League pitchers don't get a chance to hit during the course of the year, except for in interleague play, and that would be only at the home ballpark of the National League, uh, whichever park. That would be. Yeah, the White Sox uh, pitchers are one for 14, counting the strikeout by Danks his first time up. He does have a sacrifice today. Carlos just goes out and gives signs just to let him know whether or not he's throwing through or not. And a 
a foul tip 0 and 1. Sometimes they'll throw the ball all the way to second base. They'll give signs where they'll fake throw it to second and then throw it to third. There goes the runner from first and they won't throw. So yep. Beckham's in scoring position. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds defeated the Braves last night and they've taken a 1 0 lead over Atlanta today. That game's in the top of the second. Neither Upton brother is in the starting lineup today. Both were banged up yesterday as Danks fouls it back. Shinsu Chu has a base hit today, which extends his hitting streak to 11 straight games. Well, it's been a huge pickup for the Cincinnati Reds. Playing center field and leading off. Now the 1 2 pitch. Check swing. Appeal. No swing, says Adrian Johnson. Strike out here, a little easy ground ball. Big hit. Ground ball, softly hit toward first. Rough is there. Side is retired. But the White Sox get a run to take the lead on a sacrifice fly. Middle of the sixth, the Phillies now trailing it three to two. We'll be back right after this. Go further by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Well, sweat builds up. You might as well dry them off as best you can. Yeah. It's that kind of day. Temperatures in the 90s, of course, for this day game. First of two, day night double header. Tickets are available for game two if you're interested in coming out. Fireworks brought to you by Xfinity will take place after game two. The fireworks are supposed to be last night, of course. All of a sudden, the Phillies are trailing Chicago three to two as we go to the bottom of the six. Michael Young, Dominic Brown, and Delman Young are the scheduled hitters facing John Danks, who has struggled up until this point, but has back to back quality starts coming into this one. And speaking of Dominic Brown, the stars aligned for the 2013 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. It's the best of the American League take on the National League's top players. Don't miss the action Tuesday, July 16th at 7.30 on Fox.
White Sox do not have bullpen action behind Danks. He was allowed to six hits so far. He allowed the two runs in the first and allowed some base runners in the third and the fourth. But other than that, he's not really allowed the Phillies to do that much. He's kept them off balance. No longer is he a pitcher who relies on that 92 mile an hour fastball. He more relies on an 88, 89 mile an hour fastball and his changeup to be effective. Yeah, he's had a good changeup. Not only that, throwing the curveball. Getting some ground balls there when he needs them. Mike Fields need to chip away. Look at that opposition scores on you. You'd like to come right back and put up a number, preferably a cricket number. Michael Young pulls it to third, and Gillespie, a step behind the back, throws him out, one away. Banks won 15 games back in 2010 since that time and it led to a contract extension a year later a five year 65 million dollar deal but since that time he's won only 13 games he has the eighth best interleague ERA since 07 and today he's limited the Phillies to just two runs over five innings. Well, that was early on there in the first inning. You would think the more you're up against him, that the more comfortable you would feel in terms of trying to get base hits or doubles, triples, homers. Pretty good swing right there. Ball's a hanger. Just timing that one. Well, that did not have the sharp break breaking down in a way. Adam Dunn just beats Dominic Brown to the bag for the second out. And Delman Young is coming to the plate. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Chris Davis has homered for the 36th home run of the season. Which is remarkable. But the Orioles trail the Blue Jays two to one in the third. It's the second most home runs before the All Star break in American League history. Wow. You know the most? Sammy Sosa? American League history. American League? Yeah. Mark McGuire? That's a good guess, but incorrect. Same team wasn't on the team with McGuire, but same franchise. This guy played for the same franchise that McGuire did. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like the buzzer. Let me just save that buzzer for Wills. Huh? We'll get the uh, answer right then. <laughs> let me think about it for a second. One ball, one strike to Delman Young. Left handed hitter. How about Reggie Jackson? How about Reggie Jackson? Reggie Jackson in 1969. You didn't even give me any hints. You always give Wills hints when I uh, listen to uh, him trying to get any of uh, questions right. I was and, going to give you and a then hint. Sometimes you give him two hints. I gave you one. I said he played for the same franchise as McGuire. Yeah, you did, I guess. It's kind of the way you position it. Right. He's a little older than you, though. I had to give him more than one hit. Okay. I broke it. Two balls, two strikes to Delman Young. Delman is two for two today. Brown ball to short. Boy, Danks has made easy work of the Phillies. At least it seems that way. He's retired them in order for the second straight inning, seven in a row. So we've played six. We go to the seventh. Get your rest, Sarge. We've got another game coming up. Okay.
Afternoon now here at Citizens Bank Park in the ball game at 3-2. Phillies with a quick two spot and see the White Sox come back to go to 3-2. Alejandro De Aza with a two-run double. John Danks really using that changeup well the last couple innings, getting a lot of weak outs. Delman Young just missed a home run, or the Phillies would have three runs in this game. And Jonathan Pettibone did okay here again today, and uh, he will leave the game after six innings for Justin DeFreitas. DeFreitas in his 28th ball game. Record of two and three, five point zero nine ERA. He'll face the top of the order. The Azas one for two with a walk. He doubled home a couple runs, as Wheels mentioned, his last time up. Corners are in, and it's zero and one. At this point, it does not look as if the White Sox are going to get anybody up. Now they may as the inning moves on. Thanks' pitch count is still pretty manageable. The ball will be fouled. And they got him out of the way last inning, too. Uh, he made the last out in this in the uh, six. He'll have to worry about a spot coming up in the order. White Sox made a trade yesterday. Uh, they traded Matt Thornton to the Boston Red Sox. One of their left handed relievers. So Donnie Beal was uh, brought up from the minor leagues to replace him on the roster today. Thornton had been White Sox for a lot of years, too. Had up and down years the way relievers have. But pretty good pitcher. Yeah, he was traded for uh, a guy that is termed an athletic prospect from the Red Sox, Brandon Jacobs, an outfielder who had decent numbers in single A. One ball, two strikes to Deaza. And it's low, two and two. They did appeal to Adrian Johnson. White Sox sent some cash over to the Red Sox too, because apparently there's a buyout for Thornton at the end of this year for 2014. And speculation is the Red Sox will use that money to buy him out. I guess they could keep him, but just hold on to the money too. Sure. Well, they're thinking about getting postseason play and adding an experienced left handed relief pitcher situation guys big move. For and it's probably the not the last move that the, the White Sox will make. Mm -hmm. 2 2 pitch. Floated out toward left center field and Ben Revere will make the call and the catch. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They will reach a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. It is really starting to get steamy here all of a sudden. You can really feel the, how the weather has changed. I'm sure it gets tougher and tougher on starting pitchers now. Thanks. He's not a guy that throws real hard or worries about it that much. There's a, they're going to get somebody up now. It's Matt Lindstrom who does throw hard. Right. His uniform has been soaked since the first or second inning as Danks. Well, he did a very good job today. He and Pettibone both did a nice job. Pettibone wound up allowing three runs and four walks. Danks, if he's done, has allowed two runs on six hits. A liner to left field. Dominic Brown goes over. He dives. He can't get it. It's a one hop off the wall. And Ramirez will pull in the second. It's the fourth extra base hit of the afternoon for the White Sox. Well, it was hooking away from him the whole time with a right handed hitter who hit it. See, it's starting to hook. And he can't get there, so he decides to dive for it. And it hits the wall and comes right back to him, which is fortunate. That's one of those ones probably the better thing to do is just be stay on your feet and make sure that it is just a double and that it doesn't take any kind of a crazy Karen could turn into a triple. Because there's only one out. Alex Rios has struck out twice and he's grounded out to third.
Rios so far today really looks vulnerable away. Sliders and fastballs really looks like he's pulling off. But you were saying early, he did get six hits in a game recently. And there's certainly something in there, athleticism wise. My memory is with Toronto. We used to see him over there. Good looking player. Great body, tall, thin. Play the outfield. Off the breaking ball, it's two and two. Phillies half of the seventh inning. They'll have friends and Ruff and Ruiz do up. They trail it by one, and, and the charge for the bullpen is to try to keep it at a one-run deficit. There's a chance that the White Sox will go to Lindstrom at the bottom of the seventh. He's been warming up these last few moments. Foul. He's just the opposite of Danks. Really a hard thrower. At least he used to be. I used to get up near 100 miles per hour when he was with uh, the Marlins. Guys are joining a little Pez. Wheels, candy just popping on out. Any better than that if it doesn't stop, right? <laughs> It'll stop eventually. You got to refill those babies. Swing and a miss. He got him with a curveball or slider, I should say. Two outs here in the seventh. Very vulnerable away is Rio. She really, I guess you only waste a pitch inside on him once in a while. And they go away with a slider. Good slider from. From Justin after he just thrown a fastball into him. Now they're going to walk Adam Dunn intentionally, so he'll walk for the third time today. They decide they're going to face the right hander, Viciedo. Yeah, even though he doubled last time, you're going to take your chances as opposed to a guy like Dunn in a one run game. And they like their bullpen. That's one of the things they they say they uh, that has been successful for them. Adam Dunn struck out, or I should say, uh, grounded out in the fourth. But the other three times he's walked, he was out. Was he out? Yeah. We showed the replay. I thought it was. I thought he was out by a larger margin than the replay, but the replay was about a half step. Wheels will let you see it again. It's oh, our Hyundai right. defensive play of the game. Well, that is our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Kevin France with a nice play, playing real deep on the shift across his body, and he's out of first base. Robin Ventura didn't think he was out. He spent a long time out there talking about that. He did, but it, it never looked like his blood pressure uh, rose <laughs> above normal. This is the kind of guy he is. Well, he played. Our defensive play of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. 0 oh, and 1 to Viciedo, who is 1 for 3, doubled his last time. Robin Ventura is the one with the sunglasses, the hat, and without the windbreaker on. Just the jersey number 23. The number he wore. Oh, that hurt Ruiz with the White Sox and Carlos is hurt. Oh man, that ball may have gone right under the face mask and got him in the chin, the chin or the throat. It was amazing. You could see right away he was hurt, and he was still trying to keep the ball in front of him at the time, and not allow it to advance by a base runner and then call time. 
Evidently gets him in the throat as it bounces up. Oh my. Oh wow. Oh boy, that's bad. That hit him square in the throat. Yeah. They have that little guard there below the mask to try and prevent that. But that one got right up underneath of it. He's still in a lot of pain. Or is uncomfortable. Finally to his feet. That happened to Tim McCarver one time in a game in Cincinnati. He had to go to the hospital. And he was about as tough as you get behind home plate. And uh, it, it had a lot of the, with the vocal cords, everything swelling and all, and they had to put him in the hospital overnight. There's Alberto Quintero who will catch game two. He's out in the bullpen right now. Though he's needed an extra catcher out there in the pen. Well, if Tooch is the uh, star of the game tonight, he probably won't be able to do an interview. Murph had him the other night, and he did a great job. After a great game, I, I was tell, telling him yesterday, I said, your decision making, which is probably the best part of his game defensively, really shined bright the other night. You know, just in the way he handled things behind the plate, but also on those defensive plays that he made. Yeah, bunt plays. And that little thing below with the mask right there. And uh, th that's what they hope will prevent that ball from going up and doing just what it did to him. One ball, one strike to VCA Doe. And it's one and two. Yeah, it used to be uh, after Steve Yeager got hurt with the uh, the piece of the bat that went into his throat, he, along with other manufacturers, invented the little plastic guard that dangled from the catcher's mask. It went a little deeper than what the metal bars do. And the irony of Jaeger getting hurt was he wasn't behind the plate. He was in the on, on deck, deck circle. circle. Yeah. Right. But to protect him after he came back. That's when he put that guard on his mask. Here's the one two pitch coming. Ground ball over to left side. Michael Young goes to second side is retired. No runs one hit and two men left. Carlos Ruiz seems like he's OK. We come back, they'll get a chance to bat. He's due up third in the bottom of the seven. You go. Who was the first player ever to hit grand slams in both games of a doubleheader? First thing you do when you go after these quizzes is you do an association, right, with who's here? Right, guilt by association. And you think, well, who hit a lot of grand slams? Of somebody yeah. who may be in this ballpark. And you were just talking about him a lot. I'm going to go with Robin Ventura. Robin Ventura is great, is correct. Back uh, May 20th, 1999, with the Mets against the Milwaukee Brewers. Many Congratulations, hit. Wheels. Many. You have won the home edition of the Dodge Stump Defense. How many hit in his career? He hit a lot, right? Uh, I don't know the exact number. We'll look it up. 18. Wow. 
And he lost one in postseason. Yeah, he play. did. That wouldn't have counted in that total. But he lost one when Todd Pratt decided to pick him up in the air between first and second. He was telling him to get away too. He said, right. "Get away, get away. Right. Let me let me have my slam out of this." We start the bottom of the seventh. Kevin Franzen against John Danks, and it's two balls and no strikes. The bullpen is is busy for the White Sox. Well, you get six out of a guy on a hot day like this. Even a guy who's a soft tosser, you have to have somebody ready in a one-run game, and they do. Three balls, no strikes to Franzen. Franzen grounded the short as last time. He can lose it real fast on a day like this. Side corner. Ooh, that was that's a tough pitch, although it's 3-0. It still looked like it was off the plate. Man. France is doing his best to get on base. This one was closer than the 3-0. Still a ball. 3-0 was a ball. <laughs> Brian Onora, who was the home plate umpire in the final game of the 2013 season. He was the home plate umpire when the Giants defeated the Detroit Tigers for the World Championship last year. And remember in that game, he did a very good job behind the plate. He is the crew chief right now. Fielden Colbreth is the normal crew chief, and he'll be behind the plate for game two. He has game one off. Danks is just walking Franson away, away, away right now. Swing and a miss. He got him. And there's one away here in the center. And then he came with that changeup that's been his best pitch. They say it's his best pitch, and it certainly has been this afternoon. Well, four strikeouts for Danks so far. One out here in the seventh. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, thanks a lot, T Mac. We'll uh, check out these three guys. They are currently uh, barnstorming across, uh, I guess, the Phillies organization. This is John O'Keefe. He's going to be our spokesperson. You guys started last Tuesday, and you've hit, uh, except for Clearwater, every minor league park that the Phillies have to offer, have you not? That's right. We started at the Crosscutters on Tuesday, and we're up here today in between we got to Lakewood we got to Reading we got to Lehigh Valley which rained out and now here today hey, all right so what made you guys decide to, to do something like this because it's very cool you guys are three friends that work together why did you decide to do this well this was an idea I had a long time ago a couple years ago and I brought it to these guys we're uh, Iron Pigs ticket plan holders and we talked about it in 2012 by the time we talked about it, it was too late so in February we looked and this is the only week of the year where it lined up perfectly so we locked it in in February and waited and here we are all right so six straight days or five straight days uh, you're out on the road and you're watching baseball games what people want to know at home is how did you guys get off of work well I, I'm the boss so I, I, I gave them the day off but they're gonna make it up next week so it's okay <laughs> well there you have it that's the way to do it well guys enjoy uh, hopefully uh, you bring some luck uh, we'll get some runs here late in this game uh, they're having a good time guys enjoy some baseball I'll send it back up to you all right Murph thank you very much you know the Eastern League was on their all-star break up until uh, uh, yesterday or the day before so they kind of had to squeeze it in with uh, with one team the Reading fight fills on their all-star break and another team the Phillies getting ready for the all-star break. Nice when your boss comes up with ideas like that. Very true. 2-2 two -two pitch to Ruff. And he fouls it away. <laughs> I remember my end of my senior year in college. I went on, on one of those tours. It was major league tours. You know, going to Pittsburgh, Chicago, seeing both Chicago teams, Milwaukee, Detroit, Toledo. We were all over the place. It's probably fun. Probably found a few nightlife places too, huh? Sure did. The Avalanche Bar in Milwaukee, it's no longer there on the <laughs> campus of Marquette. At least I don't think it is. Darren Ruff fouls it off to the right again. Right of, really running his pitch count up right now. Up to 106. Good battle here by Darren Ruff. Franson gave him a good battle. Should be on base. 
two and two to rough. That one's hit out towards center field. Pretty well hit. Deaza on the run. Back to the track, to the wall. It is gone! Darren Ruff has just tied this baby up. A solo home run here in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's his second one since returning to the big leagues. That's big power when you can do that. And it looked like it was off speed, maybe change up the way he's been getting a lot of outs, throwing three, two change ups. He got Kevin Franson on a 3 2 changeup right before that. Yeah, and it hung just a little bit. It was up. And look at him hit that right on the barrel. And then, as hot as it is, it really took off. But this kid is very strong. And he hits it just over the wall out there. And well, it's more than just over the wall. It, it looked, looked well like it was wall. just over the wall, but it, but was, it was deep. Way out. Yeah, when you see it from that angle. And Gene McBride of Morristown, you've just won $200 thanks to Darren Ruff and our McDonald's home run jackpot. Thanks is probably thinking, I did okay there. I kept him in the big part of the year. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, now Ruiz. A curveball outside. Anytime a left handed pitcher does that to a right handed hitter, they think, all right, I did okay. I kept him in the big part of the ballpark. One big enough. Mayberry's come out of the on deck circle to pinch hit. Well, it is a shame that Franzen was not awarded first on that 3 0 pitch, but who knows if Danks would have pitched Darren Ruff differently. Right. Yeah, but they got a tie here in the seventh inning at home. That's really important. You got a guy out there who's obviously tiring a little bit right now. Ball strike ratio is outstanding. Danks is not a guy who's going to walk a lot of batters anyway. Carlos lines it to left field a base hit. That one's going to go out toward the track, backhanded by Viciedo. And his throw, and he's got a good arm, comes in cleanly to second. It's a one out single. And now, now John Mayberry will pitch in. Right, and, the, and they're going to see if they bring that right hander in because if they do, then Utley will hit for Mayberry, you would think. They know that, of course, on their bench. They're they're talking it over. Matura, Robin Matura talking to Mark Parent about it. They understand that if they come out and bring this, do this move, what they're going to get. But they may just decide Danks is tiring so much they have to go get him. I, I would think they have to. Robin Ventura making the slow walk out to the mound. There is Matt Lindstrom. Danks at 111 pitches. And that's going to be it for the left hander. So John Danks' afternoon is complete. The runner at first is his responsibility. This is an ATT call to the bullpen. John Mayberry has been introduced as a pitch hitter. We'll see what Charlie Manuel does if he counters with the right hander coming in. One man down, a pitching change for the White Sox. 
Gives us a chance to show you our Coors Light Freeze Cab. This is Darren Ruff's home run. See that change up? The ball spinning. Slowly it was going down and away from him, but it hung up just a little bit about thigh high. And what a good swing. There it is. Actual speed. What a good swing he put on that pitch. It hits it out to center field. It's our Coors Light Freeze Cab brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Well, Chase Utley will pinch hit for John Mayberry against Lindstrom. Lindstrom two and three, an ERA of 3.03. That's something, you know, the other team knows it's going to happen in this situation, but they just decided they had to go get him. He said the runner at first is uh, Danks' responsibility. Five for five base stealers against Lindstrom, but you wouldn't expect Ruiz to try and steal one. He does have a lifetime homer off this guy. And he takes a fastball at 95 for a strike. It's 0 and 1. 94 to 98 fastball slider breaking ball or a changeup. There's Utley against him. Above average in right field. Thinking about a base hit in the hole to get Ruiz the third, it would be tough if it's hit right at him. Ground ball towards second. That might be two. And there's one. And Utley is safe at first. Too much time by Ramirez, a shortstop. Underestimated the speed of Utley or running the ball out. That has to be a double play ball as hard as that ball's hit. So life for the Phillies. They should be in the dugout. And thank goodness they got a guy who runs from start to finish out of the batter's box and chase Utley. Absolutely. This ball's hit really hard. It's a dead double play ball. Watch how long Ramirez takes right there. And he was under no pressure and then he throws it low. Carlos isn't even close to him. He gives a little extra kick there on the bag. It's almost like the bag caught his foot as he went across as opposed to just flashing across it and getting a little piece of it. And it tripped him a little bit. And that cut his throw down. So at least at first, Ben Revere is the batter. Revere has two hits today. He's two for three. And he pops it up. Left side of the infield, Gillespie will give way to Ramirez. And the side is retired. However, the Phillies do tie it up on Darren Ruff's second home run of the year. This one is straight away center field. He went hunting for some bushes, and he certainly found them and tied it up at three.
face it. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Oh, a warm day here in Philadelphia. Center City looking outstanding as usual. And we go to the top of the eighth. Antonio Bastardo is the new pitcher for the Phillies. That is the only defensive change as we go to the top of the eighth. Well, that, that really worked out well for the White Sox. There's Bastardo coming into game number 40. You see the numbers on him. They really need him to do the job in the eighth inning. I say that because the Phillies did the right thing, obviously. They're trying to get Utley up there to do something big for them. Uh, but they survived that inning, did the White Sox, and the Phillies used up two guys. Utley and Mayberry and Mayberry being their defensive replacement if they get the lead and another right handed batter against if they use a left hander out there. That's a good point. So that both sides Robin Ventura Ventura did what he had to do there and it worked out. And so did the Phillies do what they needed to do. All right wheels make sure that Wednesday the seventh you get hydrated because on Thursday the eighth when the Phillies take on the Chicago Cubs it's a Citizens Bank business person special. And after the ball game, a Modell Sporting Goods kids run the bases. That's for fans 14 and under. You get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Get you out there leading the charge for those youngsters around the bags. Yeah, you're you're going to look good out there. You're good running around with kids. <laughs> well, Robin Ventura takes a look at his lineup card. He's going to make an adjustment as uh, we begin the top of the eighth inning. Brett Morrell is going to pinch hit. This is a guy they thought was going to be their everyday third baseman last year, and hopefully even this year, and that hasn't worked out. A little bit of a shower that's popped up here in Philadelphia. That's what it is—a pop-up shower. Mike Demuzio was out talking to Brian Anor between innings, probably saying, "Let me get a little spritz here, but don't let it bother you. Just uh, use it as sort of a cool-off factor." Right. Take your mask off. Enjoy it. There you go, people helping people. Inside, one ball, one strike. It'll be Morell. That's one of the greatest shows, though, in this ballpark on a windy night when they pull those ponchos out. I don't know, Wheels. There's not much wind right now, and no. that looks like it's not going well. <laughs> uh oh. Better poke a hole in that quick. It will sound go. like Larry over on radio talking about umpires. <laughs> yeah. Poke a hole in that mask. <laughs> that may have happened on the 3-0 to uh, Francis. Well, congratulations, everyone. About the time they get that ready, this rain will stop. And boy, this is too hot. Low three and two. Really fight to get back and tie this game. Don't want to lead off walk. Down the right field line, it'll slice out of play. And it remains three and two. White Sox have played 31 one run games. Arizona and San Diego have played the most, then Chicago. All around baseball, we keep talking about this team's played this many three runs or less games or two runs or less. And that ball is just a little low, ball four. Those last two pitches, well, the two pitches surrounding the foul ball were very close. We need to throw that a little further away, and it may have been a strike. Nate Jones is in the bullpen. These teams aren't used to bunting. Well, the Danks did a great job putting down sacrifice earlier. The pitcher did. So you wouldn't think that they would even think about it here. And plus, they're at the bottom of the order where they're going to hit for the pitcher. Popped up, foul territory, rough on the run, and he makes a sliding grab. What a play! Whoa. Darren Ruff 
at the last moment kicked his feet over toward the fence and put it away. Yeah there's nothing else he could do on that play. He's going into a defensive slide there so he doesn't splatter himself on the fence and then he puts a glove out and he catches it. That's a heck of a play. Right here he sees oh I got to go into the slide so I don't get hurt. And I'm going to reach out and I'm close to it and it goes right in the glove. What a really good play that is. Protect yourself and catch the baseball doesn't get any better than that. Except for you for the hitter. Well, hit a home run in the bottom of the seventh inning make a nice defensive play in the top of the eighth. Continue to gain the trust of everyone around you. And here's Gordon Beckham. Beckham's been on base three times today. He's tripled, he's singled, he's also been intentionally walked. This guy comes in a hot hitter. Runner goes, it's a delayed steal, I guess. And there are run. two outs. I, I think, think somebody so. thought it was a hit and run. Yeah, they must have. And the way Beckham threw his hand up in the air, it's almost like he missed it. Or he's thinking, well, my base runner missed it. Watch right here. See, he goes back, that's a hit and run. And when nothing happens, <laughs> Carlos Ruiz is going to have an easier play than that. So Morell's thrown out trying to steal, as it turns out. It's either a hit and run or the base runner thought it was a hit and run. But you could see, or there was a great replay. So you can see him going back a little bit, and that's fine because his job is to make sure he doesn't get picked off. And then he goes in motion when the pitch is thrown. And then it's up to the hitter if it's a hit and run. Stardo asked for a new baseball. See, they're talking about he's talking right now. What, what happened? And that would have been a good play to put on with a guy like Beckham, who's hot and making contact. And watch, he he goes back, but Stardo fools him a little bit. But that, his job is not to worry about. What kind of jump he gets, and you saw him take a look in right away, and that makes you think even more it was a, supposed to be a hit and run, at least in his mind. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got it with a slider. Well, the Stardos inning certainly took a, a 180 degree turn after the play by Darren Ruff. The misadventure by the White Sox of the base paths. Now the strikeout leads us to the bottom of the eighth. Third base prospect Michael Franco, who along with uh, top prospect Jesse Biddle is on his way to the Futures game. 
And New York City get all the news Philly fans need to know on Sports Night after post game live only on Comcast Sports Night. Bottom of the eighth inning, Morrell stays in to play third base for the White Sox. That's their only change. Lindstrom stays in and throws a strike to Rollins. Talking about turning that inning around. That was that play by Ruff. Absolutely. It was athletic, you know, the way he reacted and was able to get to that spot. Yeah, and then he goes into the slide to protect himself, reaches out, and there it is. See, Murph got the foul ball. <laughs> oh, did he? Murph, excellent, excellent effort on your part. I thought so. Thank did you, you. Did you call off the That was a hot shot, too. Yes, it was. <laughs> did you call off the photographer in front of you? I did. And the security guard behind you? <laughs> Absolutely. Alec did not get in the way, no. Communication is the key. I'm sure you <laughs> made friends behind you, too, giving that baseball away. Absolutely. Uh, that's the kind of guy you are, Murph. I'm sure there are two little friends at home, though, who are wondering why they don't get that <laughs> baseball. <laughs> I'll have to grab them one, too. Outside, two balls and two strikes. Nice of Uncle Tom, Tommy here to remind him of that. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Played the carom. It's good form. Nice job. See how he squished it? Maybe we're spinning too. Hit it twice. Not you, Murph, but Jimmy Rollins then. Murph, you got to get some padding on that netting just so you can lean on it. Yeah. Especially on a day like today. Yeah. Two and two to Rollins here in the eighth. Dirt three and two. Papelbon starting to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies here in the bottom of the eighth. Phillies hoping to get the go ahead run across the plate. And Rollins lines one to right field. It's going to hang up there for Rios. Boy, he hit that one right on the nose. Well, with one out here, the bottom of the eighth inning, we reflect on another one of our Hyundai defensive plays of the game and turn it over to Murph for the Major League Notebook. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm doing it all today. Yeah, <laughs> brought to you by Gwen and Mercy College. And you guys touched on this earlier, but the Atlanta Braves lost two thirds of their outfield last night when BJ and Justin Upton both left uh, Friday night's game with injuries. They joined uh, everyday right fielder Jason Hayward, who is already on the bench. None of those guys in the lineup today for the Atlanta Braves and probably won't be guys until after the All Star break. And, and hard to believe, guys, 28 years ago today yeah. in the sports complex down here over a hundred thousand people gathered for live aid it is the 28th anniversary of live aid today some great bands like tom petty run dmc and even madonna uh performed here uh, 28 years ago today what's that it's remarkable to and the hooters that as well been, that's right to, it's been that long it is and there was a simultaneous concert. Wasn't it going on in Wembley Stadium? Wembley Stadium, time, right? yeah. And of course, uh, it was at JFK Stadium here, right. which is no longer here. But uh, I believe that was where the uh, Wells Fargo Center is nowadays. Yep. Um, so, uh, so close, very close by. But uh, it was a pretty special day but way I, back then. I did not go. I know my older brother went to Live Aid. Uh, from what he said, it was an unbelievable show. I have to look up and see where the Phillies were that day. Had to be out of town. Would have made for a heck of a traffic jam oh if they were here. <laughs> you remember that, though. May have actually been the All Star break. Could have been. Yeah. It could have been. Don't remember. One ball, two strikes to Michael Young. And he pulls it through the hole on the left side. And it's a one out single. Although I think Live Aid was on a weekend, so it couldn't have been the All Star break. Right. I think. It'd be real easy to find out where the Phillies were on this state, and here comes Robin Ventura. Donnie Beal is up in the bullpen. The young left there, the left hander they just brought up here. As Tom mentioned Thornton was dealt last night. So Lidstrom looks like he's done, and there's the signal to the pen. Bill Welke will lift his hat, calling for Veal, who was just added to the roster earlier today before the ball game. We got a pitching change. Lidstrom is done for the afternoon, and we'll be back after this.
The Phillies take on the San Francisco Giants. It's a 7 5 start, and Brad Lidge will officially retire as a Philly. There'll be a pregame ceremony honoring Brad, a free Lidge photo print for all fans, compliments of Toyota. What are your tickets now by going to Phillies.com? It's going to be great to see Brad coming back and retiring officially as a Philly. It's a great way to get everybody ready for alumni weekend here at Citizens Bank Park. Well, he's one of the really good people, so it'll be great to see him. Well, Donnie Beal in 14 games in the majors this year has not had a whole lot of success. And er he earned an average of 8.59. Left-handers are 7 for 14 against him. Now, down in the mi minor leagues, his numbers were better. See his ERA below. Yeah, well that, that left-handed right there is not why he's in the major leagues as a situation left-hander. And no, for some of the old-timers out there thinking, is he related to the great Bob Veal? Bob Veal had an E on his on his veal, and uh, no, he is not. I looked it up. Wore uh, real thick glasses, about six foot six, threw bullets, and used to have a big old bandana in his back pocket. He'd take those glasses off and wipe them. <laughs> Guys did not like that. Could hear the squeaking oh. from home plate. He was scary. First pitch is outside. What a play by Fegley. Left handed hitters from that era, Johnny Kaltz and those guys. I remember we'll tell, tell stories later. Johnny's getting a lot of publicity right now for obvious reasons. So um, he would talk about that. That when he would take that thing out, they'd say, he can't see right now. And he throws too hard. All star game in New York City, the home of the Mets. Last time it was there was 64, and Johnny Callison hit the home run yeah. to win it for the National League. With Dick Raditz. Outside 2 0. Oh. That was the year in 64 when he did that. When he hit that home run, all of us who are kids and Phillies fans says, We're going all the way. It's Tesla. Our guy just won the All Star game. Well, some great stories the last couple of days. Stan Hockman wrote a great one. Steve Wolf of ESPN wrote one. Johnny was a heck of a guy. Here's the 2-0 pitch coming to Dominic Brown. Low ball three. And this may be a one batter situation because they have a right hander ready. For Delman. Game of 3-0 green light too and he didn't take advantage of it because that's ball four. A little anxious. This guy not close to throwing a strike with the first three pitches either. Or that one. Out towards shallow left. And Dominic Brown has retired for the second out. He's been having really good at bats too, and that's that's one of the first poor ones he's, he's had in a tough situation like that. I don't know that he had a strike in that at bat. Well, now Robin Ventura is going to make a double switch. Jeff Kempinger is going to come out, and it looks like he'll play third for Morrell. So Morrell gets just a couple outs over third base, and they're going to bring the right-hander in from the bullpen. So a double switch. With two outs here in the eighth inning. We'll be back to let you know what the conversation is with Adrian Johnson right after this.
box as part of a double switch here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nate Jones, a right-hander, will come in. His 39th ball game, three and four, with a 4.67 earned run average. They got him at 96 to 100. Fastball slider changeup. Fastball curveball slider. Excuse me. 96 to 100. Robert Ventura has used three relief pitchers now, including Nate Jones. Charlie Manuel has used two relief pitchers, so he'll use a third in the top of the ninth inning. Jones last year pitched in 65 games out of the bullpen for the White Sox. He was 8 and 0 oh mm. with an earned run average of 2.39. That's one of the reasons why they like their bullpen so much. Bring a guy like this out of there. So Delman Young is the batter. Young is two for three. Great numbers against the, the White Sox for his career. He's played them a lot, of course. And the first pitch is way outside. One ball, no strikes. Hooks that fast, hooks that ball behind his head a little bit before he throws it. Got a piece of Brian Onora. Right in the mask. He's got that little thing below there that you were talking about. Not the same thing that Yeager had, but similar. And there's a look at it. Who would hit the shoulder? Fegley is out talking to Jones just to give Brian Onora a little bit of time. Now, the home plate umpire in game one does not work game two. Field and Colbert will work uh, the plate in game two. And John Tumpane, the first base umpire, will wind over to third. That's tough on a day like this, as hot as it is when an umpire gets hit like that. Guys can throw that hard out of the stretch numbers. I think it's equally amazing that somebody can hit it. <laughs> you know, we're really that's that's why this sport amazes you how good these guys are. If they can hit a baseball at that speed, and then a guy will flip something up there that breaks and moves, and then they gotta try and hit that. I think they move the center fielder over a little bit. Especially with two strikes and as hard as this guy's throwing, they're playing him straight away in center field. They are playing the right fielder way off the line. I don't know. He's more likely to hit a ball down that right field corner than, than right at him. As hard as he's throwing. It's two and two to Delman. In the dirt. Fegley blocks it. The White Sox catchers have registered the second most pass balls in baseball. Now, Fagley's not really part of it because he's only been up for a short period of time. However, he has two. The count is two and two to Delman Young. Swing and a miss at a hundred mile an hour fastball. And that'll do it for the Phillies here in the bottom of the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, and a man left over at first. We've concluded eight so far in game one of a day night doubleheader. We'll be back with the ninth.
against the White Sox only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. You can hear the music in the background. That's the music of Jonathan Papelbon. He comes into a tie game here at the top of the ninth. Papelbon 2 0 and our run average 2.21. He'll face Jeff Kepinger. Came on as part of a double switch. And the bottom of the eighth. Kepinger is one for one lifetime against Papelbon. The one hit was a single. And he does have an RBI. Not surprising to see him have a, a lack of success. ERA wise against a team in the American League. But he does have four saves in 11 games. Doesn't that surprise you? When you yes. see him have numbers that high? Yes, because you think of Pavelbot over in the American League that uh, not a lot of teams probably wore him out. Temperature is a guy hits out of a real open stance. And then tries to come into the ball. Phillies will play the third baseman Young on the line, play the outfielders pretty deep. And you see where Michael is at third base. I think Brian O'Nora may be hearing it from the White Sox dugout. He just turned over and said something to someone over there. Yeah. They thought that was a little low. Ground ball foul past Joe McEwing in the third base coach's box. It's one ball and two strikes. Super Joe. Classic overachiever. He really was. He had a nice big league career. There he is. Worked his tail off to become a, a solid. Major League everyday player for a short period of time, but a very good utility player. Yep. Tough out. Look at that unusual batting stance, hands high. All those little things he used to go through before he got into the box and then after the pitch was thrown. I used to cover his high school games, Will. It has to be neat then to see a guy make the big leagues after that. He should go older, too. Well, didn't get any better. Here's the one two pitch. Breaking ball hooked down the left field line. Foul. That slow breaking ball he struck Worth out on the other night in a big spot. Now, when he got up a little bit, but he's so far out in front that he hooks it foul. That one outside, two and two. Happen during that nine hole, and then they go to the top of the order. Diaz on deck. Woo. On the outside corner, 92. And there's one away. A good start to the ninth inning for Papelbon. So Carlos wants a fastball away. Sets up for it. He pretty much hit his glove. That was a strike. Diaz has two RBIs in today's ball game. He's one for three with a walk. His one was a double down the right field line. He's bunted for a hit 20 times this year and he has three successful ones. So they have to cheat up a little bit on the corners just in case. Young is on the grass and roughs a couple steps behind the bag at third, at first. They see the way they're defensing him. It's 
low in the dirt, two and one. Throw him a splitter. Down's a potential base dealer too, so they don't want him to get on in this spot. Ten out of fourteen for him. First at bat in his career against Papelbon. Hit hard but foul. Ruff is right on the line. Right, he's playing. That's what you do with your with your uh, pull side guy. Put him on the line. They he get Young off the line a third a little bit. Ground ball right side. Franzen comes in and to his left, two outs. So Papabot is the first two here in the ninth, and here comes Alexei Ramirez. A reminder game two is coming up at 8 15 tonight. We'll be on the air at 8 p.m. Eastern. Pre game live will be on at 7 30. John Lannon, who's pitched Wells, last couple of outings. Actually, he's pitched well since he came off the DL except for one start. And Hector Santiago from North Jersey. From Newark, New Jersey. Relief pitcher turned starting pitcher. Ramirez pops it up. Rough into foul territory. And it's out of play. Huh. Caught in his hat. I thought that was Murph for a second with a blue shirt. You know the thought did cross my mind. <laughs> but Merce in the front row down there and he caught the foul ball. Floppy hat for everyone. Aaron Ruff just runs out of room. What a catch. Great job. <laughs> the reaction of some of the folks around him. Ballpark, and you bring your your glove or your floppy hat to <laughs> catch a ball. Might need to put that back on in a moment. It's starting to rain a little bit. One ball, one strike. Popped him up again. Ruiz off of the mask. Does he have room? He does not. That's why you need to bring a floppy hat to the ballpark. Right. Never know. Couple of guys down there making fun of a couple other guys for not making the catch. <laughs> right. It's always easier for the, to make fun than to catch it. Uh, see the guy standing up. He's making fun of the guy in the blue. Yeah. <laughs> Line drive one hopper. Knocked down by Rollins. No chance though to get rid of this. The Phillies were close to retiring Ramirez on a couple of different occasions. Now they put the go-ahead run aboard with two outs, and Alex Rios is coming up. And Ramirez, the guy who stole 19 out of 23, too. Twelfth career at bat for Rios against Jonathan Papelbon. He has three hits against him. Darrell Boston, the first base coach. He's got the stopwatch. He's the assistant hitting coach. Sorry, Harold Baines, the assistant hitting coach. Darrell Boston, just the first base coach, but could hit when he oh, played. Oh, yeah, he's good at left handed hitter. The great Harold Baines is the assistant hitting coach. He could really hit. And he's got a statue in Chicago. The ultimate, well, Edgar Ramirez, too. Those two guys you think about as the best DHs maybe of all time. Starting to rain a little harder right now. With Edgar two outs here in the Edgar night. Martinez, I mean. Right. David Ortiz is now now has the most hits for yeah. a DH in history. Oh and two through the rain. He probably passed Edgar, didn't he, or did he pass Baines? Those two guys. Was Edgar. Yeah. Hope we're getting a real good splits right now. 
Time for the final out. Time for the ponchos. Use for another part of the day. There's a towering fly ball, shallow left through the raindrops. Dominic Brown is there. Side is retired. No runs, one hit, one man left. We come back for the bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Kevin Franzen, Darren Ruff, and Carlos Ruiz due up for the Phillies. Calder and Bill Welke they decided they're going to put the tarp on the field it wasn't raining all that hard at that point but then all of a sudden it started to come down as the grounds crew was rolling out the tarp and getting ready to throw it onto the infield it really started to rain hard so it turns out to be the right decision the wind had picked up just a little bit and it caused the tarp to blow somewhat and so did the friction of pulling it across the infield uh, but this should be a very quick shower now we say that just by a quick glance at the radar. So this should not be that long of a delay. Uh, but there was no way they could have continued here in the bottom of the ninth inning with it coming down like this. And one of the things they do, Tom, by covering it fast like this is the field's not going to need a lot of work to get no. going again. Sometimes if, if you're trying to play through and you wait a little bit too long, then it gets really gummy out there. And then it takes them a long time to get the field ready when they take the tarp off. It won't now. Yeah, it's never an easy decision to decide you know when to to do this but this one after looking at the radar and seeing the rain start to come down turned out to be a pretty easy decision. Yeah it's a pop up shower they said that could happen at some point today and it also looks like it hopefully will get out of here pretty fast. Yeah we're in the bottom of the ninth inning here at Citizens Bank Park in a 3 3 game the Phillies had a 2 nothing lead after the first and then the White Sox tied it in the fifth took the lead in the sixth and then the Phillies tied it up in the seventh. On our W.B. Mason delivery of the game and it came off the bat from a guy who's going to bat second when we return. Great job by Darren Ruff work the count work the count foul some pitches off looked like John Danks came with a 3 2 changeup, maybe about thigh high and he used a big part of the ballpark to Danks to get an out but Darren Ruff beat him to the big part of the ballpark great job by Ruff. Yeah the sun was shining at that point uh, on our afternoon so that is our W.B. Mason delivery. Of the game. So here we are, bottom of the ninth inning. Phillies and the White Sox tied at three. And the Phillies, when this game resumes, will have Franzen Ruff and Carlos Ruiz do up. This is the first of a day night doubleheader here in Philadelphia. So while we wait, and again, it shouldn't be all that long, famous last words, but it shouldn't be all that long. While we wait here at Citizens Bank Park, you get a chance to sit back and enjoy softball 360.
was loosening up on the mound, so he'll stay in the ball game. Jones got the final out in the bottom of the eighth inning for the White Sox. He sat for a little bit, not only while his team batted, but also while this rain delay took place. Uh, kudos to the ground crew for getting the tarp on and off quickly. There was a lot of water out in the outfield that had to be cleared out. Uh, and they are still doing it along the warning tracks. They're they're doing it not only in front of the White Sox dugout, uh, but also down the right field line where they're relining the right field line and getting some of the water out of that area. So it'll still be a few moments as Jones continues to warm up. Now uh, the pitching coach for the White Sox, Don Cooper, is coming out to talk to Brian Onora and saying, "Hey, listen, my guy's been sitting out there. He's warmed up a few times. Let's go." Let's play some ball, but they do have to make sure they get as much water off the warning track as possible. They just can't keep puddles that large out on the warning track. Right, and as you said, the relining the, the right field line, the umpires want that too in case a ball goes down there, so there's no fair or foul. But at that point, from from where the or the grass ends out to the wall, they need to get some chalk down there. And that's what they're trying to do, and get the water out of there so they can line it. Well, that's that's the thing. The, the water is. Impeding the spot where you would put the chalk. And look, let's face it; they're trying to hurry everything up the best here for obvious reasons. But normally, they wouldn't try to get started this fast. They'd be able to have more time to do all this. The guys would do a great job. Now they're going to use the string because the initial line <laughs> wasn't the straightest. No. They were doing it off memory. They were trying. Yeah, they were. They're great. They are outstanding at what right. they do. And if they had a little more time, it would have been straight the first time. Yeah. And, uh, and the water there with, with you know, another game coming and all that. It's this is just one of those days where you just have to battle through it and it all work out eventually. Absolutely. So we'll step aside when we return. We'll reset the, the bottom of the ninth inning. The game is tied at three. Phillies in the White Sox game one of this day night doubleheader. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Ground crew looks like they have concluded making sure the right field line is as uh, good as it's going to be, at least for the time being. Phillies will have Kevin Franz and Darren Ruff and Carlos Ruiz do up. Kevin has been a hero on a number of occasions this year for the yeah, Phillies. Against Kansas City, they needed a win big time that night. Looked like they were not going to win this game. And then he hits that bases clearing double into the gap in right center field. Phillies come from behind and win that ball game. That was a huge win. And then, of course, who could forget this one? Off Torres, a guy he had faced an amateur ball in California. He went off the facing of the upper deck. That's about as far as he's ever going to hit a baseball. Notice how he went into home plate very easily. He was uh, in that pile when Kendrys Morales hurt himself for the LA Angels of Anaheim several years ago. He said he caught him. So now Franzen will lead things off. Franzen is 0 for 21 in his career against the White Sox. Mm -hmm. They've got the third baseman Kepinger over toward the line and in. The outfield. Deep in left, not as deep in center and right. And it's one ball and no strikes. You got two guys up there right now trying to ambush a fastball. The guy at home plate and the guy on deck. 
And this guy will supply some power for you. It was a 41 minute rain delay. And that ball over toward the hole. Base hit for Franzen. It almost looked like Ramirez got stuck and just couldn't move. And the ball just kept hooking away from him. Yeah, it looked like he was going to backhand that. It almost looked like he was trying to get his feet set on a normal field, which may have worked, but right there as he drags that back foot maybe to slow down a little bit and get ready to go he just won't able to do a normal normal thing there. Right. So he's had the potential winning run at first Darren Ruff who tied the game earlier is up now what do you do here with Darren Ruff can't bump with Darren Ruff. but we'll see it's not our not our call but I don't know he may hit into a double plan if he does but he may hit a double too well, they are deep all the way around now. Rios, the right fielder, is the closest of the three outfielders. With Franzen at first and a toss over, he has got a an odd move. There's nothing to it. No, he just and then all he did was throw that over to see if Buff is going to turn around and punt. They were, they just gave him a, a throw over to see what the hit, what the header or the hitter would do. Him a breaking ball on the first pitch. Just thinking what we were talking about that he may be out there to ambush a fastball early. And shading him slightly towards right center makes sense with a guy that throws this hard. And you see a big hole gap in left center. Ruff's home one, home run, which tied the game in the seventh, went 425 feet and took out a few branches of the bushes out there. Yeah, he hit that thing. That. It looked like it just got over at first, and we saw it from the side. It was deep into the foliage. One ball, one strike. Outside, two and one. Here you go. Here's a look at it. John Danks throws a changeup that gets about thigh high. And there it goes out into the edges or whatever those things are out there. There's a lot of pretty looking stuff out there. And it just got a nice water too. <laughs> to one pitch. Back toward the middle, and it's a base hit at the center field. What's Franz are gonna do? He thought about going to third. He made the right decision. He, he got his, his feet caught between his last step and the second base bag, and he needed to anchor down right there. Yeah, he's not a real fast runner, but he's a smart player. And he figured, well, the center fielder Diaz is deep. He's going to get a wet ball. I'm going to be ready to go to third. He has to stop here, though. Right there. He's on his own to take a look. And as Tom said, he got a little bit tangled up here. But Diaz is on this thing in a hurry. He cannot make that first out at third base, especially in a situation like this. Good base run. Now yep. you may think about Mark. Yeah, because you have Carlos Ruiz up. You can have Lance Nix pinch hit. He's on deck. Have another left hander, but there's nobody up. David Person. Former Toronto Blue Jay. The guy worth it, all those homers on one. They hit two of the three. Didn't they? That is right. Transit at second, rough at first. And they have to look for a bunt now. The catcher's going to go out in front of home plate and put some signs down, as you see there, on what kind of bunt play they're going to have. Carlos has struggled with runners in scoring position this season. He's at five for 33 for the year. Some fans left, but a lot of them stayed, and they are really into this finish. Well, and a lot are waiting to get in for game two. Sure. In fact, a lot of these fans will probably be part of game two's attendance. 41,000 here today. Ruiz squares, runners lead off. Long look at second by Jones, and now he steps off. Well, Carlos isn't even disguising it. He's showing that he's going to bunt here. And why? Why not? And which, what he's going to try and do is get the third baseman Kepinger away from the bag. Carlos, pretty good bunter, and he bunts it foul. They were in a straight bunt play there, no rotation play, and that is the idea to try and get Kepinger away from the bag and make him field it. Charlie just said they could get the ball down. Well, the, the number one thing when you're bunting is a bunt of strike. 
but you can see the way that he tried to approach that. He was trying to bunt it down the third baseline. Dunn gets a free run at first base. If you bunt it hard, they can always throw to third for the force. Pickoff play on. That's a balk. Yeah, it is. Bill Welke just called the balk. Wow. And the runners move up to second and third. Jones knew it too. Now they got to bring everybody in. There you go to watch what he does. Just can't go into a motion like that and then turn around like that toward first and second. More to first than anything else. Yeah, well, that was the thing that he did. And then he just continued on to first at the second. Because, like as you said, he didn't like to throw to the bases. Well, now everybody will meet on the mound, including the pitching coach, Don Cooper. You talk about the White Sox have been struggling this year. There's a perfect example of a huge mistake on the road. He's coming out more than anything right now to try and settle the pitcher down. Who's fried because he knows he's just made a big mistake. Now if he had turned toward third and wrapped around a second he would have been fine. But he basically looked like he was going in a motion and then twisted over toward first. Even if he steps off and does it, he'd be all right. But he's in contact with the rubber, and there he goes towards first and then throws to second, and they call it right away. And he knew it, too. It was not, I think they'd say also it's not a continuous motion, even though, you know, there wasn't any pause in there. But he was, deception he was to going towards extent. first, right? And there's deception involved. Infield is in, outfield is in, runners on second and third. And Ruiz lifts it in the air, shallow left field. It's not going to be deep enough to score Franzen. The catch is made. Franzen draws the throw. And it's you know, the ball got away for a moment. There's one away. You know, Carlos just they threw him a slider on the first pitch. They probably talked about it thinking this guy could be anxious right here. We're not going to go first. We're going to go with a fastball. Threw him a slow breaking ball and he jumped at it. You see how disgusted he is too. So now Lance Nix is the batter. The infield is in again. The outfield is in. Runners on second and third here in the bottom of the ninth. They'll probably pitch to him too because you have a fast runner on deck, a fast hitter on deck in Revere who would be tough to double anyway, and a contact type hitter, and they think they maybe have a guy they can strike out here. Phillies pitch hitters lead the National League in pinch hits with 37. So we got a miss, so and one. Another off speed pitch. Pinch hitters have six game winning RBIs. That's also tops in the league. Lance Nix really had a tough season. This could make it a lot better for him right now. Get a little walk off action here. Yeah, he had a great start. Not much going since uh, the first of May. Up high, one and one. Franson getting a good walking lead off third base just in case this guy throws it away. Give himself a chance to score. In the air, foul. Way out of here. He's throwing him all speed pitch, and that's the way teams approach Lance next. He threw him the one fastball way out of the zone, threw him two breaking balls in the zone. When he swung and missed that, and that one's way out in front. Look how far that ball went. And well, they need one to go not quite that far in the air and the outfield and will be all right. As your dad or grandfather said when you kid, straighten it out. Mm -hmm. Oof. Just got a piece of a 99 mile an hour high fastball. It remains one and two. Brands it over at third. Oh, dugouts. Everybody's up on the railing. And a one two pitch. Side two and two. Nice job staying off those high fastballs. Foul one back, staying off the helmet. It's 
swing and a miss. He got him with a break. Pitch. Two outs here in the ninth inning. And still runners on second and third. Ben Revere is coming up. He's been the Phillies' hottest hitter. And now he needs to be the Phillies' best clutch hitter. Yeah, they basically handed you this game. And now you're really going to have to earn it. White Sox will now move everybody back. Except for Don at first. Phillies are one for eight with runners in scoring position today. Revere has two hits and four at bats. And now Kepiger comes in at third. Slider for a strike, it's 0 and 1. Line drive toward right field. Rios is there, and we will go to the tenth inning. Remarkably, the Phillies got second and third with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth inning and could not get the winning run across the plate. Give Jones credit. He did not buckle. We'll go to the tenth, all tied at three. That's warming up right now for the Phillies. Ramirez in a seventh game. No wins, no losses. It's been pretty good for the Phillies. Six strikeouts in five and a third. Now we have a, a situation that may be taking place here in the top of the tenth inning. Brian Onora, the home plate umpire and crew chief, has left the field. And Bill Welke, the second base umpire, is going from bench to bench to let them know what the situation is. He may be going to put the gear on. Brian Onora uh, may be done for the. Oh no, there he here he comes. He's coming out right now toward home plate. I, I thought he had left the the field. He is scuffling a little bit. Don't forget, he's hit with that foul ball on the shoulder earlier. Bill Welke just went down uh, under the stadium. Maybe the thought is that Welke's going to put the gear on and then eventually replace Brian Onora. We're just speculating right now. We're not sure. But right now there are three umpires on the field. And Adam Dunn will lead it off against J.C. Ramirez. Four, five, and six do up for the White Sox. First pitch is low and in. One ball, no strikes. Got to give that Nate Jones kid some credit yeah. for being able to bounce back Especially after, after that start. After that brain cramp, where he looks like he started home or started towards first, and and, and then goes the second, an obvious balk because the first movement was. Not where he was supposed to go. The second, the first move was towards the plate or towards first base, and they correctly called the block on him, and then he got out of it. Adam Dunn looked like uh, he may have gone around on that last pitch, but Adrian Johnson says no. So it's two balls, no strikes. Now it's back toward the middle of base hit. So the White Sox have the leadoff batter aboard here in the tenth. 
And that'll bring uh, Viciedo to the plate. See if they're going to run for Dunn now. There's some stirring around going on their dugout. Their Ventura is looking. Dion Viciedo is one for four. He doubled in the sixth. Ground ball toward third. That could be two. Nice play by Young. There's the feed to second for one. Over to first in time. A 5 4 3 double play. And with two outs, Casper Wells will pinch hit. Yeah, pitcher spot due up next. Decide not to bunt in that situation. It turns into a nice little 5 4 3 double play. So. This one, it looked like maybe the White Sox had something going here. Two outs, nobody on base. Casper Wells, 174, with no home runs and an RBI. And it's 0 and 1. Base hit to center field, so Wells gets a pinch single, just his ninth hit of the year. Yeah, that'll bring Fegley to the plate. That's Fielding Colberth. That's the home plate umpire for game two. <laughs> and he's the crew chief of this umpiring crew, so I guess the assumption is, is that Welke's going to come out and Ump the plate once this inning comes to a close. First pitch is up high to Fegley, and it's one and zero. Fegley has a single today. He's also scored a run. Off the glove of Ruiz and Wells will go to second. That's a pass ball, the second of the year for Carlos. And Just going to say that Wells is not a base stealer. It never has been, but now he's in scoring position without having to steal base. Here's a look at it. It's a fastball, and he just misses it. Just dropped it. Normally we say that a catcher goes out and talks to a pitcher after something like that happens and he may be crossed up but that was just to talk about the signs with the runner at second. That ball just went in and out of Carlos's glove. It's 2 and 0. And now Reed gets up in the bullpen for the White Sox. Their closer. Yep. Along with Troncoso. Fly ball down the right field line. Delman Young a long run. And he's not going to get there. It's a foul ball though. Yeah, he, he's running a quicksand out there right now too. It's a little wet. Troncoso is number 40, and Reed is 43. Troncoso is a guy we used to see with the Dodgers. Out toward left center field, Dominic Brown got a good jump on it. He's there and he makes the catch. The side is retired. No runs, two hits, one man left in scoring position. Two, three, and four for the Phillies when we return.
the new home plate umpire. Bill Welke will take over for Brian O'Nora. We hope Brian is okay. He was uh, escorted off the field with uh, Sean Fakasny. Now he was hit with a foul ball in his right shoulder earlier in the game. Uh, he was smoked with a foul ball. And again, we hope Brian's okay. Brian had been ill uh, earlier this season in a game that we had against the New York Mets. He's a good guy. And we said he's a umpire in the World Series last year. So Welke takes over behind the plate. Colbert is over at third. He's the crew chief. And Adrian Johnson moves to second base. And Ramon Troncoso, in his 12th ball game, takes over on the mound for the White Sox. Home half of the 10th inning. Phillies and the Sox tied at three. Last walk-off hit for Rollins against the Brewers, July of last year. Mike Fontenot scored the winning run. Oh, right now they want him to get on base. It'll be Rollins, Michael Young, Dominic Brown, and a strike. It's 0-1. Rollins pulls it foul. It's 0 and, 0 and 2. Also having this kind of a setup with his stretch position when he was with the Dodgers. After he gets his signs, he kind of hides his glove and ball. Inside, two and two. Close pitch, 94. Left handed hitters hitting 423 off. Rollins and Dominic Brown are two of the first three hitters in this inning. Now the 2 2 pitch. Low ball three. the 3 2 and still has life. Rollins has scored a run today. He singled it in his second at bat. Trying to get on. Give the Phils another chance here in the 10th. They had a big chance in the ninth inning. Fly ball, left field line, into foul territory. Kepiger is there. Rollins is just standing around home plate. And there's one away. Michael Young has got his average of 291. Earlier, how hot he's been <laughs> since the calendar switched from May to June.
two balls one strike. And it's two at two that one's on toward the outer edge. At 95. Looks like they're going to try to go that way again. Ooh, slipped. Yeah. What you normally try to do, of course, in these situations, pitch away from the guy's full power. But in Michael Young's case, he can really drive the ball to right and right center, just like Delman Young does. Michael's double his first time up went to right center field. That was in the first when the Phil scored two of their three runs. They tied it with a run in the seventh on a homer by Ruff. Struggled today with runners in scoring position. That has not been their reputation since the first of July. Ball four, and Michael Young's aboard. Hit it bat by a veteran player. Yeah. And that brings Dominic Brown up. I mentioned the numbers that lefties have against Troncoso. Yeah, and then after this, it's all right handed hitters for the Phillies. Dominic is hitless in four at bats. He does have an RBI, his 65th of the year. And Robin Ventura checking his lineup card out. All of a sudden, managers are starting to get short on players. Dominic hits it toward first under the glove of Dom down to right field. Michael Young will go over to third. The Phillies will have first and third with one man down. Well, they've handed me the game again. That'll be an error charge to Adam Dunn. Second time in this game now in two innings. He, they've made a big mistake at the White Sox, and here you go with another shot at it. Dunn's thinking about backhand and that. He's already getting in position to throw to second. Watch him right here. He's getting ready to throw to second. See? And he misses it. He was going to get the lead man for sure, and if they get the double play, fine. Right here, he starts to twist his body there to pivot and throw, and then catch a baseball. Another look at it. And Michael Young sensed it and do it, and was off and running to third. Oh yeah, because that thing's dribbling in the outfield towards the foul line from where it was hit. He knew he could get to third easily. Let's see what they're going to do with their infield now. They got to bring the outfield in, obviously. Have to. And Rios is still deep and right, surprisingly for a guy that goes the opposite way. Now he's coming in. Yeah, because you can't throw anybody out from where he is. So runners on first and third after the error by Dunn. The winning run 90 feet away for Delman Young. Double play depth. And it's 1 0. Okay, their feeling on this is that if they get any kind of ground ball, he's going to hit it hard enough that they're going to get a double play out of it. And if he dribbles one towards them, they're taking their shot at that. That he's not going to do it. They're playing the percentages. Michael Young gets his lead off third. The 1 0 pitch. I think he was trying to lift a fly ball. Sure. Trying to stay away from anything on the ground because they're playing for two. He had a fly ball in the outfield anywhere deep enough, the game's over. Is hit foul. It's one and two. The music was you know, something well, Everybody was still clapping their hands. Right, right. And that's why they called time. One ball, two strikes. Everybody set the pitch outside two and two. This fastball is topping out in the mid 90s at this point. That one was at 95. The previous one was at 96. Well, he crossfires these right handers a little bit, and that's the difference in why you can get right handers out easier than left. 
Back to back righties with Young and Franzen. Due up with one out. Here's the 2 2. Foul ball. They've been staying away from the hole at bat and then came inside, it looked like, intentionally. Ball got the mask of uh, Fegley, the catcher. According to both managers, neither of the starting catchers for game one will start game two. Brown leads off first. Young off third. Swing and a miss. He got him with a slide. Two outs here in the bottom of the tenth inning. Oh, these strikeouts and these spots are killing them. Phillies are now one for ten with runners in scoring position. Yeah, they've gift wrapped this win twice. Still one more shot. Robin Ventura is coming out. Now, will they walk Franzen? That's what they're going to talk about right now. But then you give a guy no wiggle room, but they're feeling maybe being that you have a kid on deck, they may do it. The kid is Darren Ruff, who has two hits today. Right. And, and inexperienced, I shouldn't say he's a kid because he's age wise, but inexperienced wise. Plus, he's been a little vulnerable to breaking balls from right handers. One thing about Ruff, though, he has a really good eye. Like Robert Ventura asked everybody. He went around and just asked yeah. everybody what he what they thought. Well, they know France is a tough out, but you also have to get a hit now to win the game or to make another mistake. France had singled his last time. He singled through the hole at shortstop. With two outs. Let's see what they do. They're going to pitch to him. Let's see if he could be the hero yet again. He wears that mantle well. In the oh. dirt. Nice play by Fegley. 1 0. You wonder if they're going to pitch around him too and try and make him see if the fish are biting. Because that pitch was intentionally way down and away, and the catcher saved the game for them. There goes Brown. Pitch is off the outside corner. It's 2 0. And, and now they, may, well, I don't know if they will. They may just keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, they didn't care about Brown going to second right there because that run doesn't mean anything. The only thing it did was take the force out away and it puts a little more pressure on the infielders. Kevin Friends in the other night had what turned out to be the game winning hit on a pinch hit. Against the Washington Nationals, he had a tough two strike pitch, a slider against Jordan Zimmerman in right center field. He really sold out with two strikes and just hit that ball the other way. It was a great at bat. Count is two and one. Outside, three and one. Well, they're staying away with everything. Kevin France is going to make sure this is a strike he would think before he he offers at it and not get himself out. It's a hitter's count. And a ground ball to shortstop Ramirez has it. He's up with it. And the inning is over. The Phillies leave two more in scoring position. This time in the bottom of the 10th inning. No runs no hits. There was one White Sox error. We go to the 11th. White Sox three Phillies three.
And they had runners on second and third with less than two outs, both innings, and just couldn't get the winning run across the plate. So now we'll move to the top of the 11 in a 3 3 game. JC Ramirez will continue on here in the 11th inning. Phillies have used Pettibone, who went first six. Did a nice job today, three runs over six innings. Then DeFreitas, Bustardo, and Papelbon, three scoreless innings. Ramirez, a scoreless 10. And now we go to the 11th. It's game one of a day night doubleheader. Now we've been told that game two will begin one hour, 60 minutes, after the final out of game one. One hour after the final out of game one. Bill Welke, who took over for Brian Onora in the bottom of the 10th inning, continues on behind the plate here in the top of the 11th. And Gordon Beckham will lead it off against Ramirez. Beckham pops the first pitch straight up. Ramirez, or excuse me, Ruiz throws the mask away, makes the catch. Brian Onora, we mentioned, was hit by a pitch earlier in the ball game on a foul ball. This was Delman Young. And it was with Nate Jones in the game, so it was the eighth inning, right in the right shoulder. And there he is as he walks off with Sean Fikasny, kind of holding that shoulder close to his body. Yeah, probably having trouble raising the right arm, <laughs> which is a strike call, among other things. Here's Keppinger, and he takes inside. Well, this is one of the rare cases where they have another umpire waiting around. Keppinger's been up once. He went down looking against Papelbon. Every other time that happens, you're going to work with three guys. There is Field and Colbert, who is the crew chief. Adrian Johnson at second base. And John Tumpain, the youngster, over at first. Ball back toward the middle. It hits the mound. Rollins is up with it. And there are two outs. It's a great sound. It's the sound of a bat breaking. Yeah, with it trickling towards an infielder as opposed to blooping into the outfield. Now Alejandro de Aza up for the sixth time today. Well, he had one of their really big hits today, a two run double a while ago. And he nestled it just inside the right field line. Toyota Major League scoreboard, it's gone final. Down in Atlanta, the Braves, after losing last night, have defeated the Reds 5-2. Constanza, one of the guys that they just they just brought him up to play one of those three outfield spots, had a big game for them. Yeah, three hits in an RBI. Now the Phillies uh, cannot gain more than a half game on the Braves today. That ball is hit toward left center field. It's hit well. Revere is out toward the alleyway. It's a one hop off the wall. It gets away from him for a moment. Diaz is thinking three. He's on his way to third. And he's going to wind up there with a head first slide. That little kick at the end gave Diaz enough daylight to pick up his, third, his second triple of the year.
Yeah, it's a big two because he gets a third, even though there's two outs. A lot of ways to score from there. Fastball right down the middle, and it was slicing away from Revere. And there's that kick Tom's talking about. And Deaza knows that he doesn't throw real well out there, so okay, I'm going to third. Jimmy Rollins did the right thing. He had it, and he just walked it back to the infield. No sense in throwing. It's only something bad could have happened. Here's Alexei Ramirez, who has two hit, uh, three hits today. Excuse me. Michael Young in on the grass at third. And he takes a 94 mile an hour fastball. It's 0 and 1. Ryan Sandberg's in charge of where the infielders are situated. Kind of cut and dry at this point with the speed of Ramirez. You got to bring the third baseman in a little bit. Line drive, base hit to right center field. It'll give the White Sox the lead. Ramirez on his way to second. The throw is offline. It's a 4 3 ball game. Well, that's the kind of thing you, you had a bad feeling was going to happen when you had two shots to win the game that was gift wrapped for you. These balls are hit on right on the nose too. Nothing cheap about them. Another fastball is down a little bit, but in the middle of the plate, and he hits a line drive to right field, turns it into a double and a run. And Rios takes a slider for a strike. Set himself a good day offensively, considering the two run double in the fifth and now the triple that leads to the run off the bat of Ramirez. No balls, two strikes to Rios. Closer. Out towards shortstop. Rollins got to it and then booted it, and here comes Ramirez. He's going to score. It's now five to three. Error number nine for Rollins on the year. Counting the last two at bats for the Phillies in this inning, it's just been a terrible two and a half innings. Yeah. Yeah, these are. You haven't lost this game yet, but this is one of those really kick in the stomach games. That's a, an easy play, and he knows it and just ate him up. And they're going to bring left hander in. Yeah, Deekman's been throwing. To pitch to Dunn. There's it bouncing away, and. With two outs, easy to score him there, especially when you have the one run lead. So Jake Deakman's coming on for J.C. Ramirez. The White Sox have taken the lead here in the 11th.
One is earned, one is unearned, and he'll turn things over to Jake Diekman, who's going to try to get Adam Dunn out and give the Phils a fighting chance at the bottom of the 11th inning. They trail it by two. Diekman's numbers, Dunn, singled his last time. He's walked three times, and it's 0-1. And, and the White Sox have done all this with two outs and nobody on base, so you have to give them some credit. Balls, two strikes. Diekman's last outing uh, in a situation kind of like this, where he had one left-hander to face. Now it's going to be more than this if he doesn't get done. Uh, he was able to get a big out and a big strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch coming to Dunn. A little high and outside, one and two. Opposite way, base hit for Dunn. And that'll put runners on first and second. They had the overshift on. Honestly, even if everybody was set up where they normally play, that still would have found its way into left field. Yeah, as hard as that was hit. So Dunn has two hits today. <laughs> Diane Viciedo will be the hitter. He ground, grounded it to a double play his last time. Out toward right field. It's not deep. Long run for Delman Young. He's getting there and he makes the catch. The side is retired. However, the White Sox scored two runs to take the lead. One earned, one unearned. Addison Reed is going to be the pitcher as we come back in the bottom of the 11th. Darren Ruff will lead it off. Three and the White Sox will turn to their closer, 24 year old right hander Addison Reed, who's done a nice job for them. He has 23 saves and 27 opportunities, which is fifth in the American League. Fastball slider changeup 93 96. Left handed hitters only hitting 184 against him. Teacott, Blake Teacott will, excuse me, Blake Teacote will take over in center field, and Deaza goes from center field to left field. So Teacote takes over in center field, and Deaza in left field. And I was practicing his name all I day know. because <laughs> me I too. looked at it and saw Cody. 
also Mark Perrin. Yes, sir. Said, Give me that guy's name that starts with a T. He says to Cody. Okay, got it. Thanks. We think. No, we're, that's it. Yeah. So he's at center field. Here's Ruff. Ruff will start it off against the big right hander, Addison Reed. One ball, no strikes. So he's need to get the tying run of the plate. Pitcher spot is due up third. Humberto Quintero's got a bat. They've got John McDonald available too. Ruffles take it a strike. It's one and one. Set his lineup up where Cody will bat lead off if we go to the 12th. And we hope we see him. Two and one, the count to rough. He fouls it, it's two and two. Things have happened. Charlie's seen that during his career as a manager and a coach. Two opportunities to win the game with less than two outs. They can't do it. You give up runs. Maybe you come back and win it in the, the next inning. That's a good start. It's going to be a double for Darren Ruff as he pulls it down the left field line. A leadoff double. And it brings the tying run to the plate. Well, hang on, everybody. The ironies of baseball. <laughs> well, it truly never is over till it's over, yeah. as Yogi says. Ironies of baseball are, are littered all over the diamond from game to game. Yeah, gonna need one today. Here it is, he kept staying away from it, and then he threw a little slider, looked like on the inside part of the plate, and he pulls it down the left field line for a double. Well, that's a start. Darren Rupp has three hits in his last three at bats. So now Ruiz is up. And they try to make that breaking ball pitch to him away, and if they don't make it, he can really hammer it. Carlos fly to left his last time up. Really struggle with runners in scoring position. Oh, that was one of the two killers in this game. And they didn't get the run in in the ninth after the balk. Had the game sitting there for him, the second and third, nobody out. And then they had runner at third with one out, and didn't score. Ground ball toward third. Kepiger behind the bag. Let's it go. One out. And here comes Quintero, who will pinch in. Terrell will start game two. Eric Pratt's is uh, playing for the Reading Fighting Phils today. As he continues his trek back to rehab. The game's in the third inning. Reading's leading. We're tied now with New Hampshire at three.
Jared Ruff began the 11th with a double. Alberto Quintero is running out of bat. 0 and 2 on the first two pitches. Well, they're in a no doubles defense right now down the line on the pull side and in the outfield. You can almost put the first baseman on the line too with Quintero because he hits him more to the right side than the left side, even though he's a right handed hitter. That one's back toward the middle of base hit. Ruff's going to score. Quintero with an RBI single. The tying run is aboard. The winning run's coming to the plate. Well, the Phillies pinch hitters continue to come up big, at least at, at this point in the game. Yeah, oh, will they pinch run? Yeah, here comes John McDonald, the pinch run. I was going to say that they're probably going to bring somebody off the bench, but that runs a very important run. There's the base set up the middle, and you see the shortstop Ramirez pointing to second base, like, hey, we don't do anything else right now except keep the, the, the uh, tying run off second. Oh, good job by Quintero to keep this game going. And now Ben Revere with McDonald at first as a pinch runner. Ben Revere is two for five in this game. Another multi hit game. Off his foot. Ooh, you can hear him go, ooh, when he hit it. Grabbed the back of his leg too, did he? At the same time. Let's just look. That goes right off his ankle, and, and he grabbed the back of his leg at the same time. Dusted himself while he's looking in the dugout. There ain't nobody left. <laughs> no, there's nobody left. McDonald was the last player. Well, he get his first major league home run and then do his Kirk Gibson. 1,303 at bats. A little bit of pain right now, boy. Oh, well, that didn't hit his foot, that hit his ankle, his bone. Side one and one. Late swing, it's one and two. Been a ball. Chopper toward third, that might be two. Kepiger to second for one, over to first in time. An around the horn double play, and the White Sox hang on and win it five to four in 11 innings in what is an absolutely terrible loss for the Phillies, who had a handful of opportunities to win this game and just couldn't push the go ahead run across the plates. Alexei Ramirez, our Chevrolet player of the game. Four for six, couple doubles, the RBI that helped the White Sox to the victory. And the Sox have now won three of their last four. They win game one of this day night doubleheader five to four. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about it right after this. Uh, sorry, no, no,